Good morning and welcome to the earlier than normal July 23rd Board of Education meeting. We're so glad y'all are with us this morning. Um, right now we're going to get started and I'm going to invite Reverend Joey Meeks to the podium. He is uh, the chaplain for the Paulding County Sheriff's Department. We're glad you're here and he'll lead us in our pledge and invocation. If everyone would please stand. So I'll stand, salute. We'll do the pledge first. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I know that y'all have a long day today, so I'll be very brief. But, you know, the Bible talks about how pleasant it is to work together in unity. And I'll be honest with you, I've entrusted the most precious thing in my life with y'all, my two grandchildren, okay? So my prayers are with y'all, and I, I hope y'all have a wonderful year. Let's pray. Father, we come to you, Lord, this morning, Father. Lord, we know it's going to be a stressful day and a stressful starting of school, Father. But I pray, God, that you touch, and I pray as we think of this thing of unity, Father, I pray that you touch, I pray that you bless this board, Father. I pray, God, that you just build a huge hedge around our whole county, Father, between the students, the teachers, uh, the administration, and the board, Father. Praying that you'd protect them as only you can. And Lord, we know there's a lot of problems, Father, that faces our county, but we're thankful, Father, for those that you've put in charge. I pray that you'd move in their lives in a very special way. I pray, Father, that we'd look to you, the author, the finisher of our faith for all things, and just praying, God, that you'd just give them a great year this year. We love you. We thank you, and we want to praise and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hope y'all have a great year. Thank you. All right, the first item on our agenda is to adopt the agenda for today. Do I hear a motion? So, so moved by Mr. Albright, second by Ms. Cobb. Any discussion? All in favor, please show by raising your hand. Motion passes unanimously. And uh, the next item is to approve the minutes from the July 9th meeting. Do I hear a motion for that? So moved, so moved by Mr. Albright, second by Ms. Cobb. Any discussion? All in favor, please show by raising your hand. Motion passes. Ms. Lyons, you'll probably need to abstain. I don't think you returned from executive session back here once we, we broke to executive. You didn't come back for the final votes. So, Tom, does she need to abstain? From she would, yeah. Just, okay. just for the, uh, just on, well, this, is she approving just the executive no, session? We're no, not, we're not. This is for the regular session. If she was, she was, she was president of the, she didn't right. come back after the Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that motion yeah. passes 601 abstention. Ms. Lyons, at this time, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Dr. Otot for the superintendent comment. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Again, we're starting a little early today. For those of you who aren't aware, we have a training that's going to take place this afternoon as well. So we start a little earlier to make sure we can maximize our training time. But this is a very exciting time of year in the Paulding County School District because we are on the precipice of our students returning. But I did have some just announcements and general information I wanted to share with our board and community. Uh, first, I want to thank all of our administrators. We had our had, uh, all of our administrators, assistant principals, principals, EACs, district office staff back for our administrative pre-planning meetings last week. A tremendous success. Good seeing everyone back together, excited about welcoming our students back to our schools. It was two days we spend together every year talking about our priorities for the year, our vision for the year, but also all the other things that it takes to get a school year started. I'd like to thank everyone who's there um, for making that a great event. Uh, we're already getting ready for kids to come back, and one of those first signals of that is new teacher orientation. Uh, that will actually be taking place tomorrow at PB Rich Elementary School. That's where we welcome back or welcome our new teachers to the district, provide them training opportunities to really kind of get them in line with starting that school year, and it always is a great event, and we're very excited about that. Then, of course, our staff returns this week, uh, which again, uh, is another bell ringing saying it's time for us to welcome those students back but i want to thank everyone who has worked this summer to prepare for the return of our teaching staff our bus drivers our cafeteria workers our nurses our custodians everyone who has worked so hard to prepare for the return of students we're excited to have you back to our parents of course open house is right around the corner open house will be july 30th again open house is july 30th as we do in Paulding County, all of our elementary schools will be open for open house from two until six. That gives parents an opportunity to be flexible with their work schedules, 
So our open house at elementary is from two until six. Please stop by, visit your teachers, visit your friends. Um, and then our middle school and high school open houses are from four until eight. So again, four until eight for our middle and high schools. And again, we give those flexible hours. So if you have an elementary student, you can go earlier. If you have a middle and high school or both, you still have that opportunity to visit all of your children's schools. And then believe it or not, the first day of school is August 1st. I would like to thank our Sheriff's Department. Many of you probably saw they sent a communication out about safety on the roads, being aware of children, being aware of the bus. And I will tell you, our Sheriff's Office will be out supporting us uh, with traffic and helping remind our community that we have to be safe, but always safe and vigilant when, it return, when our students return to school. We anticipate over 30,000 students this year. We're excited about having each and every one of them come back to us on August 1st. But again, I'd like to thank all of our staff and we're absolutely looking forward to a great year. Uh, one bit of information for the board. Um, we had talked about our next car rider line event. Um, I will send this out to you in email as well, but we're looking at Shelton Elementary, August 23rd. Um, that's a Friday. And again, we want folks and in, in talking with uh, the principal to probably get there around 715 in order to uh, beat the traffic, but I'll send that out to everyone as well via email. But again, the big thing that um, I want to share with this community is we're thrilled that your students are coming back. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to enrich their lives, and of course, they do the same for us. So we're excited about the year, Mr. Chairman. That's all I have for you this morning. All right, thank you. Um, we can go ahead and move right on into presentations. We have two presentations for you this morning. First, I'd like to welcome Gabe Carmona, principal of North Paulding High School, to the podium. As we do with any trip, field trip experience that is overseas, we ask our schools to come forward and share information about that trip with the board. And the drama club or the drama program at North has scheduled a trip to London. And Mr. Carmona, I will turn it over to you so you can go ahead and provide some information about this trip. Yes, sir. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this morning, Board of Ed members, uh, Superintendent Dr. Otot. Um, I'm Gabe Carmona, the principal of North Paulding. I brought our drama teacher here, Brittany Patterson, in case I don't know some of the details or weeds, and plus she could probably say it more eloquently and maybe put on a little performance if necessary, <laughs> if, if, I'm, if I'm drowning or anything. Um, the great thing about this trip is it's a small group and it's not during instructional time. So it is a trip. Um, those are the dates that the company gave us, which is EF educational tours and they give tours everywhere throughout not just the United States but throughout the finalized dates just want to give you that update is Sunday the 16th through the 22nd Saturday the 22nd and just receive that um, information so it's during um, winter break during February break and not during any instructional time a little bit about EF educational tours as I said, they're 50 uh, plus years and they're located everywhere and provide and have a reputable uh, company. Uh, they will also have a tour guide that will meet at the airport and will be there as a 24 hour emergency line. Uh, peace, they have peace of mind policy. They even have an emergency policy in place financially if something happens or it has to be canceled or refund. So again, big company that has done this for a long time. Um, and let's go over the itinerary and then of course anytime you have any questions, please fire away or, or, or wait till the end. That'd be great. Um, so this is a very small, fun, educational. They have actually two performances at night they get to see and then one workshop for the students. It's a max of 30 total people. So that's a mix of students and a mix of adults. And here are some of the sightseeing uh, that they get to encounter and some of the highlights um, they get to go to. Piccadilly Circus, as I mentioned, um, some theater performances at night and they get to even um, perform, I think it's on day four, mm -hmm. um, that they even get to have a little theater workshop um, and explore the great sights of um, London. Hotel, they don't let us know until two months uh, prior based on availability and rate. And those are our, our two hotel choices, the Peon Crodon, if I pronounce that correctly, and the Holiday Inn Express um, Watford Junction, which both are near train stations for easy access with the tour guide and access during free time um, to go around. 
meals. They kind of talk about the cost of it, lunch on their own, breakfast is there, and talk about that um, um, water's provided, bottled water, all of those allergies, let, them, let us know, let them know. Of course, let me go through quickly the itinerary. Day one is the flight. Then you talk about, as I said, meeting um, the tour guide at the airport with you through the different um, sightseeing of the different squares, the Covent Garden. Uh, day three, more, uh, more sightseeing. Um, and then they have a performance that night that they get to attend um, after they go to, of course, Big Band Piccadilly um, Circus. Day four and five, that's when they get to attend. Uh, day four is a theater workshop and they get to visit uh, Stratford, the uh, birthplace of Shakespeare and um, visit uh, gardens at Anne ha um, Hathaway's Cottage. And they also have another theater performance. And then um, go to the, the market. They've already been to the Global Theater. They'll return to that some more. And that is our short brief. I believe also we submitted a little um, little highlight page, of just some more information and fundraising and everything else. So currently right now, um, the max we're looking for is 30. Already have, I think, 21, and some people have already deposited um, money um, toward that tour already. And I believe maybe there, there may or may not be one or two of those people in this room currently. Um, so um, off and running and uh, want to advertise a little bit more and try to get to that max number. But if not, then we're at a good number right now, about 21. Great. Any questions? What will you be performing? Oh, we, we will just be performing in a workshop. So workshops tend to be working with actors from the performance or actors that work in mm. the theater. Um. Couple of questions. So, the Ed tours um, are they contracting with the club, or are they going to contract with the school itself? They are independent. Yes. They are independent, and the money that is paid either biweekly, monthly, or all at once, or how that works. And when we get fundraising, we just simply just have our uh, bookkeeper, Mrs. Uh, Patterson, contact them and say these certain individuals worked it. But everything is through them. Money is not going to be touched at the school. It's independent. So what I'm asking you is, and, and, and I may be thinking about this the wrong way, usually there is a, um, there's a contract of some sort with the um, provider and an agency so uh, do you know if there's going to be one in this case or are you just saying that that I know I know you're just not giving them money and they'll put it together and let us let you know it is with the individuals through with EF tours educational tours so I'm each in, do, I, yes. do I understand what you're saying Mr. Carmona is that each traveler has their own separate contract with Absol the tour company absolutely and it's not with the school or the school it is not with the school because it's dear it's not during school time it's 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 okay outsourced okay that's a better word no that makes sense um in terms of the fundraising well let me back up you're, there's max 30 going and currently nine students, 12 adults. Or is it, is it going to be more students than adults or do you, do you? More, stu more students than adults, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. It just seemed a little odd, you know, more, more adults than kids, so. I know. <laughs> more students than adults, sir. All right. And it's in two months out from when, um, from 2020 is when you have final of, of the two hotels, yes. Okay. And, and the exact airline, correct. Okay. So I think it's, it's and um, Ms. Lyons and Ms. Cobb can correct me if I'm wrong. Traditionally, our, our, if we've got to approve it as a board, we usually, you know, it's, uh, what's the word? Provisional until we have at least the details of, okay, this is exactly where our kids gonna be staying at and, uh, you know, what, what airline and things like that. So just FYI. Any other questions? Thank you all so much and I hope you all have a fantastic trip.
Ms. Thank Patterson, I know you had to get up early this morning. Thank no, you for coming okay. out and sharing with our board. <laughs> Thank you for planning experience for our students, and we'll provide an update to the board in terms of where we're at as the trip approaches. Mr. Comona, thanks for coming out this morning Thank as well. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda this morning is our financial update. Uh, Mr. Barnett was unable to be here this morning. Um, you have the one pager that we traditionally give this time each month. And he did provide me a couple talking points. And of course, if you have any specific questions that I can't answer today, we will respond to you directly in terms of those questions you may have. Um, this is the May 2019 general fund monthly update. Both revenue and expenditures are approximately 2% better than budget year to date, um, right in line with expectations. We have an unassigned fund balance that reflects two months of expenditures in our course. Our goal by the end of this year uh, that fiscal year, which we'll pre be presenting next month, is one and a half months of fund balance. Uh, we posted this information to the website, and next month will be our final 2019 financial update, um, filed by the fiscal year audit, which is hard to believe it's already time for our auditor's return. Um, as to our board and our community, we always appreciate your feedback at budget at paulding.k12.ga.us. That's 24-7, 365. We're always looking for that feedback. But again, uh, this is our monthly financial update. And again, if you have any questions, please let me know. Okay. If not, we'll move into our action agenda. Um, we have two items on our action agenda this morning. First is something that's very exciting that we talked actually about at our last board meeting is we received funding for our second phase of our Governor's Office of School Student Achievement um, Accelerator Grant. That is in the amount of $44,914. And basically these funds would be utilized to support our uh, directional uh, bringing computer science instruction uh, to two middle schools, really, and actually would act as pilots that we could then scale to create more opportunities for students in middle school around computer science instruction. As you know, ultimately our goal is in the 2021 school year to open our computer science magnet at Hiram High School. The two schools that will be supported with this GOSA grant are Dobbins Middle School and PB Rich Middle School, which of course directly feed into Hiram High School. We see this as a great opportunity. One of the things we discussed actually when our legislative delegation was here at our last meeting is that legislation that was passed moving forward um, with computer science education in the middle grades. We feel like we're ahead of that curve. This grant is going to support our initial implementation and our goal will then be to scale that to all of our middle schools over time. We recognize what computer science brings to our community in terms of opportunities and training for our students. We're very excited about this grant. We did receive um, news yesterday from GOSA that was a little bit discouraging in that they're changing some direction with grants and we had really planned and had been pushing towards the year three implementation grant which is the largest piece they have changed some uh, offerings at gosa we're going to continue to work with them on any opportunities that may come forward and jana is already looking at other opportunities to help replace that but uh, we are very appreciative of this grant we feel that it will absolutely support our students it will give us a leg up as a district and being more prepared uh, in terms of bringing computer science to the middle grades. And this morning, um, I do recommend the board approve the GOSA Accelerator Contract Amendment for the additional amount of $44,914 in funding with the extension of the contract period through June 30, 2020. All right, here in the recommendation, do we have a motion? So moved by Ms. Cobb, second, second by Mr. Chester. Any discussion? All in favor, please show by raising your hand. Motion passes unanimously. A tremendous team is working on this. Uh, you know, Jana, you're kind of leading the charge in terms of the grant writing, but our curriculum department, our operations department have all collaborated on this and it's very exciting for us. And we are very appreciative of GOSA for funding this for us. Uh, final action item on our agenda this morning is our asset disposal for July. And I do recommend approval of the asset disposal list for July, 2019. All right, hearing the recommendation, do I hear a motion? Motion by Mr. Dean. Second by Mr. Albright. Any discussion? All in favor, please show by raising your hand. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. 
Uh, final item on the agenda for me is our fundraiser or our points of information. And we do have our fundraiser report this morning. You'll see this is a pretty extensive list of schools prepare for the 2019-20 school year. And if you have any questions regarding fundraisers, um, I'm here to answer those. Any questions? <clears throat> Ms. Cobb. Uh, we have timelines for them. We're not doing them on a monthly basis or a bi-weekly basis. It is almost regularly like a quarterly. But what we've done with that, though, is we know the peak time for fundraisers, and we've given principals those dates so they know when they need to have them in. All right. At this time, we'll move into board member comments. We'll start with Mr. Dean and go down the line to Mr. Chester. I'm good to date. All right. Um, I just want to thank our Paulding PTA. They, um, they have taken over the backpack, back to school backpack program, and it was a big success Saturday, and it was really good to see the, the kids and the parents come and be excited to start back to school. So I just want to thank uh, them for all their hard work, as well as um, all the community members who donated to that to make it successful. I had a do-over. I apologize <laughs> to Michael and uh, Mr. Breedlove. I had the privilege of going to um, our um, our security briefing for the northeast uh, northwest portion of Georgia. It was an outstanding meeting. I'll be honest. I went there just to make an appearance, and I stayed all day. Uh, it was an outstanding meeting. I'm really impressed with the fact that we're focusing on uh, mental health and, and and the kids, and not just doors and windows and locks and cameras. So the, Thanks to your staff, that was a great. They did a they great job. They did the entire meeting for the northwest uh, section of Georgia too. Yeah, they did an awesome job. But also to Ms. Cobbs um, as well as the PTA took a huge event over. I'd like to thank Jason Freeman. I know Clark was out there. All of our district staff who kind of worked side by side with Jade and her team uh, was really excited uh, how well they did. Okay. Uh, the only thing I wanted to ask uh, Dr. Otato is if you could get us a list, uh, maybe as school starts, of the DARE graduations for the yes. elementary schools. We're working uh, on just that. Just to schedule. Okay. Yep. That's all I've got, Mr. Anna Vitarni. You good? You good? I just want to say it's exciting to start a new year. Yep, sure it's is. Always. You good? Yeah, you know, I echo the same thing. I'm, I'm excited starting back again. It's always good to see. Uh, community come back from the summer, see the kids back. You know, this is uh, it's kind of go time for for everyone, the organization. So glad to see everybody come back. So looking forward to it. That's it. All right, at this time, we'll, we're gonna take a uh, vote to go into executive session. We'll discuss uh, personnel, legal, and student discipline, and no votes will be taken other than to approve the minutes from the meeting from July 9th. Do I hear a motion to adjourn to executive session? So moved uh, by Mr. Dean, second by Ms. Cobb. Any discussion? All in favor, please show by raising your hand. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, we've just returned from executive session. No votes were taken other than the approval of the minutes from July 9th. Um, at this time, I need to entertain a motion to um, add, to, to amend the agenda to add a land right after board norms and before we adjourn. So moved. So moved by Mr. Chester, second by Mr. Dean. Any discussion, Ms. Cobb? Well, you made the motion and he seconded it, right? Oh, that's right. I made, the, well, no, I said I need to entertain a motion. Oh, okay. okay. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. No, I'm good with it. Okay, any discussion? Everybody good? All right. Um, all approved. Show by raising your hand. Motion passes 6 0. And uh, at this time, I'll turn it back over to Dr. Otop for the superintendent's report. Yes. Uh, approval of personnel. I do recommend approval of personnel items 1 through 377. All right, here in the uh, personnel recommendation, do we hear motion? Motion. Motion by Mr. Anavitardi, second by Mr. Dean. Any discussion? All in favor, please show by raising your hand. Motion passes 6-0. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I also approve a rec request approval of the June 2019 tribunal report. All right. Uh, we hear a recommendation for the tribunal report. Do I hear motion? So moved by Ms. Cobb, second by Mr. Dean. Any discussion? All in favor, please show by raising your hand. Motion passes unanimously. All right, and before we uh, go into our board norms training, uh, we're going to take about a 10 minute recess um, and then we will start at 945. Um, so we'll go ahead and take a break at this point. Is that everybody? We already did. Yep. So we're going to break until 945.
Okay, we are back from recess and I'm going to turn the meeting back over to Dr. Otot and he will introduce our, our guest today that uh, is here to train for our board norms training. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we all know Julie Rame from GSBA. She came out and worked with us last year. Um, and one of the things we actually talked about was norms and protocols. And as a board, we've been working together to kind of bring that process to a close here. Um, I shared a draft with you of those norms that we developed, but today is really to discuss those and really take that next step into institutionalizing and how we do our practice together. I'm really excited about the day today. Um, Julie, thank you so much for coming out and spending time with our Board of Education, this very important process. I know you've done this with other boards. In your packets, um, Julie has provided kind of a worksheet that will work through at points, but also some sample norms from a couple other districts. And I've also included our draft norms uh, in that packet as well. So Julie, if you're okay, I'm going to turn it over to you and just thank you for coming out this morning. Well, thank you for having me again. I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, to get to see all you guys again and I bring greetings from your friends at the Georgia School Boards Association especially your executive director Valerie Wilson she'll me a hug every single one of you because she knows she loves hugs mm -hmm. um, but I'm thrilled to be back here this is a very very important thing to do that most boards should undertake at some point and more and more are currently doing it. I know that when I was first elected to my board and I hadn't taken the oath of office yet 15 years ago we sat down as a board and they let me come in because they needed to develop some board norms because of some bad behavior that was occurring at our board meetings. Um, for instance, someone wearing unprofessional clothing to the meetings where other people would be dressed professionally. So let's come up with a norm. We're going to be business casual. It was a little things like that and how we communicated with each other that really made my job easier as a board member because it took the guessing game out of how to behave and how to treat each other and and how to um, form as a really, really strong team. And it worked wonders. And we always updated it every year at our retreat. And then we would reaffirm it in front of the public. Because one of the main things that it does is it, it, it helps the public understand how you treat each other, how you handle requests from them that are really outside of your purview because it's a day-to-day -day operational issue. Um, and it helps people follow that chain of command because most people, as we've talked about before, most people in the public don't understand what your role really is. And they think that you can solve all of their problems with their, their child's teacher, for instance. So this is a really important step, I think, to becoming a really well-oiled machine as a governance team. So um, do you want to take a look at the, the board norms that you've already come up with? We have a worksheet mm -hmm. called the Governance Team Operating Norms and Protocols. And usually this is where we jump off and we spend time answering these questions. But y'all have already started this process, which is really good. Um, but we can refer back to this um, throughout this process. But one of the things, and I, and I really appreciate this document that you shared with me, um, Dr. Otot. This is what y'all determined was the important topics for y'all to cover during this process to make sure that it's reflected in this document. And many of them already are, and some of them aren't, that are high priorities. So one of the, one of the things I like to do is to start off with, you know, like Covey says, begin with the end in mind. How do you want to be viewed from your community, from your staff, from each other, from your teachers, from your, your community members, from your religious leaders, your business leaders in the community. When they hear of the Paulding County Board, what do you want them to think about? And we usually come up with a list of qualities um, that you want to aspire to achieve. Transparency might be one of them. Honesty might be one of them. Putting kids first. Those are the types of things that we like to just, you know, have a discussion about doesn't have to be many. It could be several, too. So do we want to begin the discussion there? That would be a great place to start. Okay. So when your stakeholders, parents, staff, teachers, business leaders, fellow public servants think of your governance team, and that also includes the superintendent, um, what adjectives would you like them to use to describe you? And Michelle's going to be taking notes for us, right? So we can always um, come back if we want to list off what we've already covered. 
So throw it out there. Um, I think <clears throat> sincerity is the most important quality. Um, I think being professional, uh, being informed. I think being informed and being transparent goes hand in hand because uh, you can't be trans you can't be uh, transparent if you're not well informed, and um, and also devoted. Um, devoted. So. So I, I got sin sincerity, professional, start. informed, and devoted. Did I leave anything out? Those are all great. And then we'll, we'll just kind of list them all out and then come back and, you know, if we want to go ahead and agree to these now or we want to come back and visit it later, we can do that. Um, Kim? I, I'd say engaged um, and receptive and accountable. Because I think a lot of times when they reach out, they expect someone to respond to them at least. Whether so what was the second when you said engaged and accountable? What was the middle? And receptive. Receptive. Okay. So receptive to hearing feedback. Yeah, and, and getting back to them, you know, following through. And follow through. through, yeah. Great. John? I had responsive. Uh, uh, response, responsive is one of mine. Um, and engaged was the other one. Good. Responsive and engaged. And, and you know, for me, working with this group on a daily basis, I, I truly feel that the care for kids, yes. you know, that's not an adjective necessarily, but caring uh, and, and focused on students. Student focused is an adjective. So, yeah, that's a great one. <laughs> that's a good one. That's why we're here, right? Exactly. <laughs> that should be number one. Okay. Anything else, Nick or Jason or Jeff? Yeah, I mean, the ones I've basically we've talked about or I mean, we've been talking about in terms of being transparent, holding each other accountable, um, and being engaged. Okay. Yeah. Jeff, you have any others? Mine, mine receptive. Yeah, these are all really good. Glenn? <laughs> competent. competent. Qualified, competent, and able. Yeah, you got to start somewhere, right? Lay the groundwork. Yeah. And I'd also throw in the respect piece is big. You know, as a as a team. You know, we all come with different ideas, different thoughts, but that we respect each other in this work because it's so important. It really is. Let's see. Anything else that rings the bell? Michelle, you want to read back your list and I'll see if I've left any of them off. Those are the ones I have. So how we feel about those? Are there ones we don't all agree on um, or that you have a problem with? I think this is important um, is being unified. Unified? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a great one. That doesn't mean you can't disagree. Right. on how you come to the end and you know the, the trail that you take to get there but the fact that you are unified for kids for the kids in your county that's a really important one I like that and in listening to the the qualities that we're sharing they're really truly in alignment with our mission you know yes. engaged devoted is inspired you know yeah. being prepared I think there's a lot of just really uh, mm -hmm. alignment with really the direction of the district too. I, I agree. These are really good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything else there? That was really fast and easy. 
We're good. Y'all are good. We are engaged, and, inspired, and prepared. Yes, you are. And I, I, and I meant to say in the beginning, you know, we always read up on our school boards across the state. And y'all have been doing some fantastic work because it's not every day that you make Maureen Downey's um, column on the budgeting process and how well it went and how your teachers, what, 5% raised or all staff across the board. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. So kudos. Y'all are doing some really great and hard work and, and the positives are showing. So. But, and I thank them because we've gone through several large issues in the last three to four months. I mean, yeah. big issues and, and really the collaboration that I see. And again, I, I think the unified point is, is well received mm -hmm. that we may not all agree on every single bit, but yeah. when it comes down to the final outcome, we're supporting staff, students, the community. And, and again, we've, we've done some really hard work you in have. the last several months and, and it's, and it's uh, shown to be very positive, and I, I just feel very appreciative of the willingness of everyone to work together as a team. And I will always caution y'all to take time to celebrate those wins, because it's rare that we do take time to say, hey, you know what, that went really well, and how can we replicate that? Because so often people in this world are focused on the negatives, right? You, know, you gotta put out the fire. So that's when you hear from people, but it is nice um, when you get to hear from the community and your teachers, if they, you know, hopefully they're, they're appreciative. I'm sure they are <laughs> knowing them. So kudos, that's fantastic. And that's not an easy process. Yeah. Um, many, many people had to raise their millage rates just to handle the 3% raise because so much is not funded locally. Um, if they have extra staff and, um, so going forward, you know, how do you continue to maintain those numbers and that's always the challenge I know y'all are dealing with growth still so that probably won't slow down for a while yeah. so yeah I know <laughs> don't think so yeah so anything else with um, adjectives I mean we can always add to them later once we get this document together and hopefully y'all will bring it to a board meeting and approve it and make changes at the last minute that's fine but this is your document and it's living and breathing and that's why we recommend you updating it every year. What's not working, what is working, what, what did we forget to put in here? So. I would just add uh, mutual respect. Mutual respect. That's a good one. Like I said, it's okay to disagree as long as you do it respectfully. Because mm -hmm. everybody comes at things as they are, not as you are. And everybody has different perspectives. So, all right. Do we want to take a, a look at what we have already? And maybe you can give the community a little background who's watching. Okay. Um, we actually had a training with GSBA and part of it was a, a pretty extensive packet of sample norms from other districts, right. as well as kind of a check sheet on what are the types of norms that boards typically or maybe should have in terms of how they operate with one another. Right. As a district, we actually surveyed the board Mm -hmm. And that's where you came up with the priority sheet that you referenced sheet. in terms of what are the types of things that we see as a board as a priority in establishing norms. What are the areas where we, we think we're okay and what are the areas we've already addressed, whether it be through policy or somewhere else. So the priority list that I've again included was something that we shared several months ago, but was just really the, the, the results of that survey that mm -hmm. we took. And then based on that, we've established a draft set of norms um, with this board and um, ask for feedback. And I actually have, as we go through this, some an example of some of the feedback that we've received that may form our discussion, yes. inform our discussions about this. So we have this base template um, addressing hopefully the high priority uh, norms, but also wanna look through and make sure that as a board, there's things that one that we may have missed that we need to address or that if there's areas we feel like we may need to look at the language and tweak. Mm -hmm. So this may be a great place for us to start is just with yeah. what we have. I do love the two samples provided. Yeah. I think you'll see as you look through them throughout the morning, there's a lot of consistency. Mm -hmm. There's boards that address some items we haven't, for example, social media right. um, would be one. But just really starting through and, and, and looking at what we've established and try to um, come to that consensus around these. Right. And you have to remember when you develop these, you're not gonna be on the board forever. Um, and there will be new people that join the board. 
So this is kind of a, a nice guide pull for them. You know, it, it, it really should live and breathe and change as the boards change, but this is really going to be helpful for any new people that come on the board. I'm sure it would have been helpful maybe to you, Jason and John, just a year ago. So I know it was very helpful to me. So that's why I highly recommend that you update this on a yearly basis. Um, all right, so let's start with communications. And the subtopic is communications among board members, superintendent. And I'll just read them out for the audience, I guess. Yeah. Um, superintendent will communicate with all board members regularly via email or text. When a board member has information or data to share with the other members of the board or staff, that board member will provide the information or data to the superintendent who will distribute. Three, board members may attend events, activities for the community, but should refrain from discussing board business except during called board meetings. Number four, the preferred form of communication among board members and the superintendent is via email. Board members, superintendent should make every effort to check email or text daily. When email is sent to the entire board, board members should be blind copied so as to avoid inadvertent reply all. The text of the email should note that all board members are being blind copied. When a text is sent between the superintendent and board, members should not reply all unless requested by the sender. All email communication will comply with the Georgia Open Records Act and the Georgia Open Meetings Act, and all questions and or comments should be submitted to the superintendent and board chair via email or text. So that's what we have as a jumping off point. So let's go back and discuss what, what you have here and what's missing or what you don't like. Um, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. You sure? Yeah, what sure. Did, okay. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I thought was an issue is just the specifics of this. It's, um, I think in some areas, we want our protocol to be specific in other areas more general. So it's kind of a weaving in and out between the two. Mm -hmm. For instance, um, the very first one about communicating regularly via email or text. Well, I think one of the things that we've discussed was communication is important and communicating regularly is important. How it's done is, is drilling down into too much detail because there are times frequently when, you know, I talk to the superintendent on the phone and that's sufficient for me. Or the day may come where a board member is, hey, you know what, Skype, whatever format you're using, that's good for me. So what I'd, what I'd, what I'd like to see, and I think would be better for us, is not to have this level of specificity in our protocols um, to this detail, because then that leads us to changing it every single year. I think, for instance, a better statement would be the superintendent shall communicate with all board members regularly period mm -hmm. as opposed to text or email or any of those type things just that he shall communicate regularly or we shall communicate regularly or something like that but i don't think we want to have our protocols so specific as to you know you you must email me every monday between two and three <laughs> because what is that going to do for the board the next year and the next year so you know, that's, that, I, I think in this block, that's one of the things. The other thing is um, for section four number, what is that, A? Or four number three about the Georgia Open Records Act. That could be part of the first bullet. You know, it, I think it's redundant because it's saying we're gonna follow the law. Mm -hmm. Well. That we don't need to put that in our protocol and guarantee, you know, most of us are going to try to follow the law. So, you know, that's like saying we won't discriminate today, you know. So, I, yeah, some of those things are redundant. I think it's a good draft, but I think, you know, so we go through and maybe clean it up and take away some of those areas that, hey, you know what, we don't need to say we'll follow the Open Records Act because we do that anyway. We shall continue to do it. That won't be an issue for us. Um, we can guarantee that. Yeah. 
just remember that your community is going to be reading this document too, and it's a nice reminder that you do have to follow. You don't have to list all the detail there, but the open records, the Georgia Open Records Act. So um, I hear what you're saying. That's true. I, I had something real quick, John, and then I'll, I'll get to you. I was going to say the exact same thing that Nick said. I was going to put a period after regularly yeah. because I, I prefer sometimes a phone call, and I don't want to limit him to right. having to text and email and all that. Um, my other one was on number two. When a board member has information or data to share with other board members and our staff, um, I don't want to limit them from being able to send an email to everybody, and I also don't want to eliminate calling the chair try to get something on the agenda as well because you know in a sense these are our meetings not the superintendent right. you know um so I, I didn't want to put a and i kind of wanted your opinion on that as far as if one board member has an, something they want to send to everybody does that is that open? me open? I, I circled staff in that one because if if glenn has something that he wants to suggest and and runs it by the whole board including the superintendent he should be able to do that sure i don't think there's anything wrong legally with that just know, of course, that all of your communications, whether it's text or emails, are subject to open records. So you want to make sure that you're not holding a meeting outside of a meeting on um, email or text. But yeah, I think that you should be able to email who you need to email on a regular basis. But I would not want um, <clears throat> you sharing things with the staff. And, and I thought that was a little unclear under number two. Um, if you want something to get out to the staff, then you would send it to your superintendent. And that can be a protocol. I mean, that, that's included in a lot of protocols. That right. I agree with staff, that his staff. The board, yeah. the board was what I was referring to, the board members. Yes, I think and it's just fine for y'all to email each other. Um, I, I'm sorry. On number two, Jeff? Yeah. What, what I looked at was on that second line that board member will provide just striking through will and making it may. So just leave all of it the rest and say the board member may provide the information. That way, you know, you're, you're giving it the leeway I think it deserves. All right, just, just for everybody, what I'm gonna do as we go through this today, I'm gonna strike all these out and then I'm, I'll get with Dr. Otot at some point and we'll try to, you know, bring this down to a final And I'll combine my notes for you too right. as well. Yep. Mr. Dean? Yeah, I was, I was kind of following up on what Dick said is we've got, we could probably have two sentences or two, two statements here if we had the right wordsmanship or we had some attorneys on the board here that could help. <clears throat> uh, it, we're, we're, like, like he said, we're getting way too much down in the weeds about you got a blind copy and all that stuff. It's, it's, I don't know. I, I, I almost do kind of appreciate the the reply all rule on this one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Be because I think inadvertently, when I, I, I like the fact that Dr. Otak can send something to all of us, but we don't all have to yep. reply to all of us. Right. I mean, that's just that's right. between the group. T I, I like him to be able to group text <laughs> us and email all of us. Right. But if you want to say thank you, you can send that directly to him. Yeah. I don't have to put thank you where everybody else is getting dinged all day. I mean, that's that's just kind of more professional right. than board stuff. And, and if you don't see the text, you don't have to reply at 2 a.m. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you <can do> it <laughs> yeah. Thank right, you. I'm, I'm gonna if your phone's not turned off. No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. Um, and on one of these examples, I think it was Bryan County's. Yeah. One of the things I noticed that wasn't in here is, let's say you get contacted all of y'all, including the superintendent, by a parent, a concerned parent about what's happening at their school. How do you respond to that? Does the board chair do it? Does the superintendent do it? You know, if it's a day-to-day -day issue, it, it should be him. It should be Dr. Otot, right? So make sure that everyone is copied on that response so that they're informed. That type of detail isn't in here. If you want it to be in here, it's easy to put in. I, you know? I thought it was down further in the communication section somewhere. I saw Is or it? I read something down there that addressed that about who the spokesman was. The issue to the superintendent who may delegate to appropriate staff. Correct, but so. that's not an email. So right. when you get emails, not just when you're out in public, that's that's kind of a separate thing. If you wanted to have something a little bit more detailed, I know we did, and it was helpful. 
Um, and if it was a board issue, then this, the board chair would usually respond and copy all of us on it. But oftentimes, you know, you know how your community can get san you know, sanctioned here versus them, and they, they might just copy you four on it, but not you three. And so if you get that kind of email, we agreed to share that with the rest of the board so that they have the, the knowledge that you do, so that there isn't that option to have, you know, sanctions uh, on the board of this versus that, depending on whatever the issue might be. And, and we have one, one, I guess, way of doing things that's already kind of in place. Doctor, if, if one of us has a, hey, we need to research X, Y, Z on the budget, when he finds his answer, he will reply to everyone. Yes. And that probably, I mean, we already do that, but it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to put that in here, too, since we already are in practice yeah. of that, which I think is great. That way. It is everybody knows what he's researching at the, at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things I know I've shared with some of y'all, I think even Dr. Rosado, I think is, um, you know, if we have, you know, a question about <clears throat> data, facts, almost anything, <clears throat> I mean, for me, I don't like to speak for myself, but I almost kind of consider almost like an unspoken rule that, like, everybody should know. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's one way of just kind of keeping it transparent. Everybody knows what's going mm -hmm. on, and everybody's shared, and then they also have an opportunity to contribute to the conversation. But I think that's great. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. Th that's I what I was thinking, think too, that if we've got a request from Dr. Otak, we should CC the chairman plus the other board members. Yeah, and, and yeah. that can get tricky. So it's, it's, if you want some information that's going to require him to pull a lot of staff together and a lot of staff time and kind of throw him off what he was already working on. That kind of needs, if, if, it, it, if it's helpful information, I think the, the board should also sanction that too, the majority of the board. So that's usually where, that's decided at a board meeting in like future business, but we'll talk about meetings in a little while. So that you might want something, Glenn might want something, and Jason might want something, and then he's, you know, trying to get all this information that might not mean a lot in the in the end if the if there's not already a report but i don't think y'all do that i don't think you abuse that but you never know who might come on your board and do that so if you have that, it in writing it's that was my helpful. comment is it ought to be cc'd through the chairman before anything that goes to dr otak if i'm requesting him to paint the bus as green or something I, we gotta i should cc the chairman right on that too so i mean again this is this is y'all's what y'all prefer so we can make a note of that. Yeah, no, I, I agree. No, I, I agree. I mean, any 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 time you would send Dr. Otot a research, I would copy the chairman, and then then Dr. Otot's response would be back to the entire board. Is that is that what we've and pretty much? And he said? said to copy you on it. Right. Any communication that he sends to Brian um, that he's requesting some data or whatever. He would copy the chair. He would copy the chair. Right. Isn't yeah. that what I'm hearing you say, John? I, I think you already do that. Yeah. I mean, I, I, most do. Um, as long as you do that and then his response is back to the entire board. Yes. Then we're, that's, yeah. I usually do that unless we're talking about the chair. So. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I think what you were talking about, Julie, too, is um, I was just looking at uh, Griffin Spaulding. It mm -hmm. says, request for information from individual board members of the superintendent that will likely require considerable time and effort must be approved by the majority of the board, but what I hear you guys saying is that if it flows through Jeff, you know, that decision can be made, and if it needs to be discussed at a board meeting. Then put it on the agenda. And let, let him determine how it's got to be handled. It could be just a, hey, Dr. Otak, let's do this, or it may be come up before It may be something simple that he can just get to you right yeah. like that. It, and there again, going back to Dr. Otak, if it's going to take weeks to get, and there's only one person out of seven wanting it, then Jeff can email the rest of us and say, okay, as a group, do we want him spending right. his time on this or not? And that way Jeff's not left to make the decision by himself, nor right. does Dr. Otot have to tell one person no. Right. It's like if, if, if everybody or the majority doesn't feel it's important, then exactly. let's prioritize our As request. long as there's a process in place to do that, then, then we can cover that here. So you can cover it in a meeting, which we'll talk about, and then you can cover it through that process. So that's an easy, easy one to add. Good. 
It, before we move on uh, away from the communication section, uh, mm -hmm. Nick, did you suggest that we just strike number three altogether since we already followed the law anyway? That just take correct. that totally out? That is correct. Okay. Strike, well, yeah, strike three altogether. You mean number four? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. yeah. section like, four, what? number three, sorry. Section four, number three. Correct. To strike the whole thing? Yes. Right. Okay. Anything else with communications? Um, one last thing on number three. Board members may attend events activities for the community, but should refrain from discussing board business except during call board meetings. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that, if we could redraft that, it's somewhat ambiguous because you're an elected official, you're in the community, you know, what is the definition of board business? Is, is you know, right. if, if a community member says, hey, you know, you know, I, I, I hear y'all going to do this millage rate thing. Well, that's technically board business. You know, if somebody's saying, hey, you know, I don't like the bus making that noise early in the morning picking up kids. Well, that, you know, it's board business is undefined. So I don't want to be in a position where, okay, you know what? Anything could be board business because it's so ambiguous. So I, I think it's fine. I think the statements in it of self's fine or the intent is fine. Mm -hmm. It's just it needs to be redrafted because... You can define anything as board business. You know. Right, I, I would agree with you on that. Um, I think we can word it a little mm -hmm. differently in terms of you don't want to speak on behalf of the board because you as one member do not have any power, right? right. Only you in a meeting acting as a body has power. So, I mean, you can certainly talk about, well, the board felt this way when we voted for the millage rate increase. And these were the reasons why, because that's already happened. Even if you don't agree with it, this was the will of the board, and you have to, you know, in the public, go along with that. Um, that's one of your ethics right. uh, that you have to uphold. Could it could it read? Board members may attend events, activities for the community, but should refrain from acting as the board spokesperson. Sure, that'd be perfect. Yes, and, and at the same time, I also took that same statement a different way. I agree with what Nick's saying. Also, I took it it's plural, although I don't think it's meant that way. But if we, I know we try not to show up at anything with four of us being a quorum, but if that was to happen inadvertently at some event where we did not know the other people were going to be there, right. I also kind of took that to also mean, well, we at four Spread out. somewhere, <laughs> we should not be discussing any kind of board business if there's four of us just happen to be somewhere. So that's a great, take that that's a great thing ways. that we might want to add to that. Yeah. Just... And the board will agree not to discuss board business at social events if there is a majority of the board present. So that, that the community is aware of that. Because we, we would personally just split up, you know. Well, that, that's together. already, that's kind of like what Nick's point was to section four, number three. That's already law, is you can't have a quorum and discuss board business anyway. So putting that in a protocol is just kind of repeating the what we already know to do anyway, right? Right, right. but does the community know? Oh, gotcha. Okay. And, so, I, and gotcha. I agree with that. I'm just saying that number three could have been taken two different ways. I don't really know how it was intended, but it could have been taken that way, not only speaking on behalf of the board, but just if you happen to end up somewhere, just make sure, like she said, right. we're looking around and not talking about any kind of board business there. So um, that's right. That's all I meant. Because this, even if you're not doing it, you'll be accused of doing it. Right. <laughs> you know? This may be a Tom question, but can we have more than four? Can we have four people at a social event, as long as we're as long as we're not conducting or talking shop? Oh yeah, yeah. So if you're driving to Savannah for the GSBA conference, you know, and you have four or five to a car. That's perfectly legal, um, but you should not ever discuss board business because it's not fair to the others that aren't there. Yeah, and just to put it in perspective, it's not wrong to, for everybody to be there. It's wrong to discuss right. board business while you're there. Exactly. Unofficially, right. Unless it's that, by call. Unless, unless it's by call. Unless you plan to be somewhere in particular. Should, should, right. Or should call. If you just show up at the social event, Right. 
to even sitting at the table for the luncheon during the conference. You know, that's technically most of the board usually, right? So just be mindful not to do that. I'll tell you what came to my mind was the new teacher orientation tomorrow. What if new teacher orientation? Us, yeah, what if four of us show up tomorrow? For a school based. <laughs> yeah. I'm just perfectly fine. Okay. You know, for just don't discuss board business, you know. Make any decisions on uh with the majority of the board there, you'll be all right. Yeah. Last thing you want to discuss. Yeah. <laughs> sure. This is a hard one, so it's good that we're getting this one off the bat. Anything else? Those are great. So we'll move on to communication with the news media. Board members will be kept informed of incidents and district positions slash statements. Communication by board members to the news media should be helpful to the district and not harmful. The board chair is the official spokesperson for the Board of Education. The official spokesperson for the district is the superintendent or his or her designee. Superintendent delegates to the public information officer as appropriate. Num How do y'all feel about that one? Uh, number two, I think, has to go. It's it's um, it's too ambiguous to say a statement should be helpful, not hurtful, because who's decide what's helpful? Who's decide what's hurtful? You know, if if theoretically, if you're an anti-tax person and you're against tax. And someone saying, hey, you know what, that's floss. We did the right thing by letting the voters vote on it. Well, somebody may say, well, that's hurtful, you know? So that's such a wide door to walk through as, as who would determine what's helpful and hurtful and how would you ever know what the guidelines are? You know, what's the definition of a hurtful? What's the definition of helpful and who's to decide? So I think that's one of those kind of statements where, you know what, you're better off just staying away from that and I think you get into some areas legally where, you know what, as an elected official, you do have a certain amount of autonomy and freedom to make statements because you have to. So, you, you know, you can't say just anything you want to, but you know what, you start getting into a kind of freedom of speech issue and, you know, I, I think it's something you could probably put some more parameters on. I mean, my view when I was reading this, I think is um, make sure, you know, we're not kind of talking against our own school district or, you know, kind of, I don't know how to say it, but yeah, demeaning you, our- Supportive. Yes, I, I mean, you would be surprised how many board members out there speak against their school district and their fellow board members and staff, principals, coaches, and then that's unethical behavior because you're supposed to support, you're supposed to go out there, including right. in the media, and support the decision of the majority of the board, even if you disagreed with it. That's part of your code of ethics. That's the state law. And so that's what that means is don't harm your own, don't, don't harm your own school district by, you know, saying bad things about it, uh, about each other, about your superintendent publicly. Those are the types of things that that, I think, was the intent of what was put in there. So if we need to reword that, I totally understand. Yeah, I like, I mean, like advocates, I mean, we should be, communication should be advocating for the district. I mean, yes. in a positive manner, I think that's, you yeah. know, versus harmful or helpful. I mean, part of our job as a board member is to advocate um, and educate. So I don't know how that, I mean, to me, that's positive and not harmful. And to add on to that is, um, also with our board of commissioners mm -hmm. um you know keep a positive relationship right and and make sure that we don't yeah. throw them under the bus and things like that and um just just work in a positive manner which we do and have right been for for many years like right decades but um, but it's to prevent new people coming on from right. not doing that. So right. that's why if you spell it out and you might want to include in, including your fellow elected officials in the county. Right, right. Yeah, whether I, it's city. I, I find that comment kind of timely, Teresa, but whatever. Well, you know, one of the other issues is news media. What's the definition of that these days? You know, if, yeah. if, if, the, if the paper is here, I don't say X, but I can tweet it. 
you know? Can I put it on social media? Because that's not the news, you know, I'm, I'm not saying this is bad, but I'm saying it, it, it either should be, we should either strike it or redraft it in a, in a different way. Because I think maybe the intent mm -hmm. isn't being con conveyed in this. Because the news media is very narrow. Maybe if that's what we mean, that okay, news media, you don't do this, but there's so many other mediums of communication these days that, yeah, okay, I didn't say it to the news media, so I'm still in, in bounds, you know? And I thought it was helpful. So right. I, I just think this is one that needs a little more thought. Well, and there again, um, on number four on, under that, it is the spokesperson for the district is, um, well, the superintendent or a public information officer, as well as the board chair is the official spokesperson for the Board of Education. Now, I know in the past, if uh, Mr. Spiglion was here earlier with the paper, sometimes he wants a quote. Yes, he does. I usually say, I'll check with you later if I need to give you a quote, because I'm not going to quote something about the board. Right. And then I'll usually call counsel and say, well, you know, when is this good or not good? Well, if he's asking me about something I did, then that's mm -hmm. one thing. But you just have to be extremely careful not to throw us all in there with that um, publicly. Right. So, and because they will come up to you after a meeting and they'll want to quote from you and you and you, everybody, especially the bloggers. <laughs> the bloggers yeah. have a lot more time and they don't have an editorial board they have to put the content through, right? Mm -hmm. So they don't, they can just shoot at the hip if they want. The AJC can't and your local paper can't. So it, it, I would highly suggest you have another category for social media because that is a whole different ball game. But I always defer to the board chair if they wanted a quote from the board. Now, they can quote you during a meeting. So just be mindful of that, that they're here taking notes or recording, and that shows up in an article too. Yeah, and because they're asking you about a statement you made. So you need yes. to be able to back up the statement you made. A, a lot of times, luckily, he's very good. He doesn't embellish or anything like that. But sometimes I'll just say, you know, could you please email me that? I'll, I'll get back to you because I yeah. want to. I want to process it. I don't want to give him right. a quick answer and go, well, what were you really saying? You know, I don't want it to be misconstrued. So right. uh, he's been very good about that. If it's something specifically, I think one of us said, I think he would give you time to get back with him on that rather well, than that's just good. answer him right after. And that's what I would always do. If there was a question, I would get the questions and then go to the superintendent or the board chair, depending on what it was, to or get clarification. Mr. Cable. Or what? Or Mr. Cable. Yeah. Either. Yeah, if it was a legal matter, no, I right. would never comment on that. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> no. Yes, John. I wanted to let that one play out because I've got a comment on number one. Okay. Uh, board members will be kept in form of accidents and district positions and statements. I would like to add with timely uh, follow-up on status. That's one of my pet peeves. We get, uh, well, there's been an accident, a school bus on such and such road, and we don't have follow-up on later of what happens. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's very reasonable to ask for. Do y'all feel comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. And I do agree with Nick on number two. It's, it's ambiguous as having a nice day statement to me. But I think we'll just try to wordsmith a little bit better. Um, when it comes to incidents, we even had one, you know, let's say, that the school's on lockdown because it's, there's been a bomb threat. Well, parents are gonna hear from their kids before they hear from anybody because they're gonna be texting. And so you're a parent and you get this and then you call the superintendent. Well, we had a protocol in place that our superintendent would text us or have someone text us immediately what's going on. But you want him focused on putting fire out or whatever the problem is. But as long as you're informed, that's, that's, that's a really important thing. So when it comes to emergencies, we put in there that it would be text. You know, when I got on the board, we didn't really have text. So, you know, that's why these things change over time. And who knows what will be um, in two years from now as a method of communication. Anything else in this? Y'all are all good with... Jeff being the spokesperson, as, as long as he's board chair. Thank you. <laughs> Except Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we move out of that section, I think let's let's clear up number two. Let's, okay. let's come up with a, and then we can probably move on. Um, 
I, w I, w I think it would be fair to say um, communication by board members um, would be only positive and informative, maybe. But we'd probably need to clean that up a little bit. Yeah, like um, advocate. She said advocating for the school district in a supportive manner, um, or something like that. But we can definitely wordsmith that. I think um, to your point, Miss Cobb. I think if the intent is not to be ambiguous and to get into helpful or hurtful, I think maybe we could just say making statements that are contra contrary to the position of the board or the district. Because I think we can all discern from making statements that are the exact opposite of the position the board has already taken, as opposed to getting into the position of saying, well, that's helpful or hurtful. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. that's fine. I, and I mm -hmm. think this rarely happens, but we have had some out of the blue calls during the summer from news media about this or that. And if you have newer people on the board, yeah. they talk to them right there on the phone or, you know, it's just nice. This will just make you think, hey, maybe I should check with somebody before I go talking to somebody because right. they have a way of talking to you for 10 oh, or yeah. 15 minutes. And then they put the worst 30 seconds yeah. on the air. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, some of the news media does that. Thankfully, locally, it's a lot better. But, um, you know, I, I think that's probably some of the issues that have happened in other places. Well, one district, one, one of their norms is do not go on radio or television uh, because it can be, unless it's live, because it can be used against you, because it can be edited. Of course, so can words <laughs> in, a, in a print media article. So. I mean, they were really paranoid, and they, they requested that the questions be given to them ahead of time, right. which is always helpful. So, you know, you want to build positive relationships with the news media so that there is trust, and you want them, you want to help them meet their deadlines to help you communicate what's happening in your district, but you want to do it in a positive manner, reflective of the district and your fellow board members well, and superintendents. One of the sample norms you provided said, not to go on camera or radio unless the questions are provided prior to the interview in an effort to prevent the message from being manipulated in the editing mm -hmm. process. Right. So I mean, we can add that if y'all like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you know, if it's on local TV, you don't want to be on local TV. <laughs> if it bleeds, it leads usually. So unfortunately. Uh, on number three, about the board chair being the official spokesperson for the board. Mm -hmm. We we actually, what I'm thinking is, I don't have an issue with that. I think it's a good thing because it kind of funnels the point of information, but that's more of a statement. And we actually have an actual policy section that has duties of the chair. So I don't know if that's something we want to think about at a later time, because if we're, if we're saying in our protocols, the chair shall do X and the chair shall do this and things flow through the chair, but the actual policy that says duties of the chair is two lines. Official spokesman. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then those two, they're not in conflict, but they're not really congruent with each other. Does that make sense? So I think at some point, if we adopt this as it stands, which I think we should, then we have to actually backtrack and take a look at the language. Add it to the actual policy and the policy. Yeah. responsibility. So right now it's not in there? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would definitely add it. Yeah, we could always reference board policy, right. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And my question to y'all is, if the board chair isn't available, does it go to the vice chair? If y'all are... Yeah. And yes. Because that's what the policy says, actually. Yeah. All so. duties the board chair can't do or don't perform that shall naturally flow to the vice okay. chair. So I would definitely add the spokesperson to that policy. Yeah, and I think I think these instances are very rare. Right. Um, but you know, as a chair, I, you know, I, I don't see Jeff going rogue or anything. I mean, I think it, you know, it, it's like okay, well, let's going see rogue. what the board really thinks, and then <laughs> and then replying at that point you know what i mean um and i think it's good for the public to know it if is. we're all out there and somebody's saying something even though the perception is we're a board member speaking for the board that should never be the perception uh right. it's going to happen so 
this is just another thing in writing that if right if You're we right. all send Jeff to do something then he is right so keep that in mind when you're electing your new chair every year <laughs> <laughs> they need to be a pretty good spokesperson well, we no offense to you have, Jeff I'm just giving you heart excuse Great. me um, a liaison for our media right so how does that fit into this we, there's actually one of these norms that re, I think we actually reference it here the superintendent delegates yep. to the public information officer as appropriate or other personnel as appropriate because mm -hmm. it could be your CFO about the budget right. yeah. so your, your your chief communications officer wouldn't yep. be as um, up to speed with all the nuances of the budget compared to your CFO right and I see what Teresa's asking so that. maybe we add or other designee yeah because he's he speaks on behalf of the district uh, Jay speaks on behalf of the district and Dr. Otot and that staff, whereas right. the, this is for the, the board. OE is completely separate. So as right. far as this governing body, it would be not Jay that speaks on behalf of the governing body, but Jeff. And then Mr. Dillon would speak on the district things such as the budget. And he's right. your PR chief, right? Yes, uh, and I highly recommend anytime the media wants a quote from someone Superintendent. I mean, it's usually a day-to-day -day issue, unless it's one of you resigns and you have to appoint a new person, you know, if it's a board-related thing. But your staff is always going to have the intimate knowledge of what they're going after usually. So as a norm, you want to default to your superintendent. If you wanted some details, the uh, Bryant County School Systems under Section M has got a real good listing of if you want details what to do and not to do with social media is even addressed as um, yeah okay I'm open to that as well right now yeah we spent a lot of, I was down in Bryan County and we spent they worked really hard on these we spent seven hours working on oh, these wow. um, but they they were starting from scratch <laughs> y'all have already y'all are above I mean y'all have already done some work they started from scratch and filling out the forms and it it was a great process they it was well, we're going to have to add a whole new section for social media. I don't think we addressed that here yet. Have you we? haven't, and that's one of on my list of things that we want to have y'all address. Do you, we want to talk about social media right now? We probably should. Okay. If we're talking communication before we get into staff, we'll probably have to push that down to in that in that A section as well. I would imagine. Okay. So I was, actually, I was actually referring to the communication with the news media. I got on the wrong line. I was reading ahead of myself while I was talking. Do you want to refer to the Bryan County one, uh, Section M, under social media communications, while we're talking about it, to see which ones of these that you what, like or don't like? What section? M. It's, it's M, M Bryan under Bryan County. County. The next to the last page. Yeah. And I'll go ahead. The first is to use social media as a tool to promote positive and important news about the school district, not engage with public on controversial topics on social media, not to respond to negative comments on social media, be positive and mindful how their actions on social media reflect on the whole board, be mindful on posting about politics and stay away from responding during a crisis and rely on the district social media sites to relay critical information. Now y'all have social media sites for Alden County, Yes, correct? Okay. We do. So that's the official correct spokesperson when there's a crisis. Right. Yeah. You know. The the biggest thing that I have on social media is do not engage in any unhealthy debate with fellow board members on a site. That's a that really is good a one. that is a potential problem. And also, if if you have one board member, if you have a, a person in the community that asks a simple question, and you go on social media and you answer that question. And a fellow board member sees that, well, you know, you may not have answered it the same way I would have. Send that board member a private message and say you may want to edit this. Don't right. correct them in front of the whole community on social media right. as if, hey, this board member doesn't know what he's doing, but I do. That That's just some things that I've seen a pattern that we make and not yeah. with us, but I've just seen it yeah, in general I've seen with it other too. governing bodies, you know, that 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 may need worked on so it's a mutual if, respect thing right. treat people how you want to be treated right it yes. is so. an area of opportunity for us to make a big mistake correct <laughs> but correct. it is you're absolutely right i think we probably need to come back to this because that's going to be a whole it's going to take a while yeah and and then another thing is i don't know but in the last couple of years some districts have implemented crisis um management or crisis response policies so 
I don't know if Bryant County has that as a backstop, but a lot of districts do. I think that's why they may have in there during a the crisis rely on, you know, they got something to fall back on that's an actual policy. Right. So we may have to take a deeper look at that in terms of, of um, you know, social media and things like that, because we, I don't think we have a crisis management policy or something like that. That's number one. One. Go well, ahead. Hopefully, you, your communications person has a crisis yeah, we have communications a plan. Process, yeah, and how we communicate with the community. And yeah. then I, unless I'm engaged in the crisis myself, will keep the board informed right. of that. And I guess what that one's speaking to is, hey, you know, if, if I were to send the board something about a crisis, not to begin promoting that or sending that out to others in the district, right. you so know, that, is would would so that that's an the top level of in communications? I'm sorry. What'd you say? Wouldn't that go in the top level of communications about crisis management instead well, it's of social, having it? It's social media. Yeah, but Correct. I mean, in general, though, I mean, it's going to apply to the news media, to the social media. and the That's why I brought it up earlier when we were talking about communications. What happens under crisis? You know, how do you want to be communicated with during a crisis? Because that will arise. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I'm sure you already have a crisis communications plan with your PR people. Correct. So... I'm not sure. I'm sure they're familiar with it. At some point, we'll share it again, because it never hurts to reevaluate it and right. relook at it so that they're Absolutely. kept in the loop. Because I know it's an administrative thing, but it does affect them because Absolutely. they're out in the community and they're going to hear from people. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I think, especially in you know the last few years of a text, you know, Dr. Ostad does a really good job of letting us know when he's aware of something, letting us know what's going on, and then pretty soon after, what what I normally do is. You know, the parents may be on Facebook, they may be texting or emailing, but it's usually pretty soon after that that our communications officer, mm -hmm. you know, does his press release, puts it on Facebook. So rather than me reply to anything, I guide them back to, the, you know, the, the district, district website, Facebook, the, the district, district, district Facebook, website, Twitter. the district Twitter, because then that lets me not accidentally make right. a mistake because they're pretty quick at putting something out there. Right. And, and if they haven't, then I'll just say, hey, Thank you for that information, Dr. Otak. When will it be somewhere yeah. we, we can redirect them? Because that way we can't go wrong if we're just directing them to right. the but, people right. that have the information. But I think that's a structural problem that we have to fix. Because what, what I'm saying is we don't have a crisis management policy. There's an administrative rule that the district follows. But if we're talking about what the board does and what we do, then it has to be a policy. Because I don't even read all the administrative rules, you know? I, and it changes from year to year because that's where why they should. So I think that's good the district has something, but in terms of how we operate, if the district has a crisis management rule for itself and employees, then I think we should have maybe a crisis management policy for how we operate in a crisis. And I think that would go to communication as well. But I, I, I don't think we can rely on the, the administrative rule that technically doesn't even apply to board members. So I, I understand what you're saying. We're talking about the same thing. But I think, you know what, that's the, the structural disconnect is, OK, in terms of communicating to a crisis, a policy would apply to us. An administrative rule doesn't apply to board members. Unless you create a communications protocol. Exactly. Which often we, we do create communications in a crisis what's your protocol specifically so you know what to expect and the new board members who come online know what to expect from your administration and that's so, a really great thing to include so that's why i think jeff we should just table that one yeah social media all together because yeah. the second thing about it i meant to mention is that um and tom can speak to this a little bit if, maybe it was last year or year before, there were some, some court cases that came out that online statements, social media statements made by board members are looked at as intent in terms of policy. I think it would have to do with redistricting over in that Alabama case where the court said, look, you know what, board members were publicly saying they're this is what they're trying to do and they're talking about it on social media. So we can infer that this was the intent of the board in adopting this policy. Sure. So, you know, it's not like saying things out loud. You, you make written statements. It can be interpreted that way. So I think that's a whole wormhole we got to dive deeper into at a later time. 
because anything you say can and use will be used against you, right? As, so as versus, an elected so, official. <laughs> so Nick, what you're saying, instead of a norm and protocol, we may need a social media policy for the board. Is, but isn't that the same? Is that the same as a norm and protocol? I mean, why would we be doing? You would want to put it either both. in one place or the other. And since we're talking about communications and news media, social media is right there with it. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a policy and, and you know, it's really your legal expert here can advise the fewer policies, maybe the better sometimes. It, it depends on what the, the topic is. You, sometimes policies get to be too tight that, you know, you want to leave some gray room for interpretation. And I'm definitely less is more when it comes to policies. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if you want to spell things out specifically, I would put them in this. That's, that, that was my thought, too, is to put them in norms and protocols and not confuse policy and norms right. and protocols. This is more of a like an ethical type. This is an uh, let's or, hold you accountable, accountable for what you y'all right. all agreed to behave and yeah. treat each other. Because if we have a policy, there's no need in sitting here going through right. norms and protocols. If you had a policy for every one of these, then, yeah, you're right. Right. I agree, I, Jeff. I just think that even if we do it as a protocol, we just probably need to do a deeper dive than as we sit yeah. here and. Yeah. Yeah, because crisis is, is a very important topic. Mr. Dean, I've got a little different take on that, Nick. I think that the crisis management ought to be moved all the way up into the section A underneath the overall communications and social media should be a standalone that would be governed by that top level statement. Because it is a it would cover if you have got a what, what are we going to do as a board during a crisis? If we had a statement in there on what we should do, it would cover everything else underneath that for the news media, for social media, or whatever. And you can make that, it a separate category if you want. I mean, yeah. and, but we're, social media to me would be just a standalone, you know. Don't I mean, worry. I think we're over com making this complex. I mean, because I think that whole process is really going to be almost no different than how we would handle a day to day situation of how Brian already communicates with us. So I don't, I just want to be cautious. We don't like overcomplicate it. Right. Because to me, the communication streams and flows is, right. is really, at least at our level, it's not going to be that different. Keep it simple. I mean, we highlight it, make sure it's known, but, and I think Teresa had a question. Teresa? Oh, I just wondered if we're going to table that. Do we need to vote on it? We're just we're just generally just discussing our right. and protocols. And well, it, he's talking about diving deeper into it at a later meeting, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean actual table table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and here's the thing. So basically, what we need to do today is just say, okay, we're on social media. Yeah. Don't act like you represent the district. Don't speak ill will about another board member on social media. Don't argue with a board member, mm -hmm. and don't discuss le pretending potential legal issues on, I mean, right. just generic, right. you know, uh, code of conduct type issues yeah, versus diving yeah. and overthinking the whole, the whole process. So, well, you know, that's why I said section M looks so good because it's just straightforward and simple. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I think that goes back to part of our, um, I think it's probably in our pledge, but, you know, part of our duty is to kind of educate the public. So if they're asking for factual information, we're not aware of, we can ask and put the fact out there. Or mm -hmm. if there's something out there that is completely egregious and wrong, right. mm -hmm. then you can respectfully just correct it um, and move forward and stop that conversation in the rumor mill by putting facts out well, there. But also not. too, activities that are going on in the community that, under, that undermines the success of this district. And to me, we can debate it, I don't care, but like, but to me that applies to whether that's an organization, a business environment, another body of government, which yeah, we wanna have good working relationships, but at the same time, if there are policies out of control of this body at the county, the state, the federal level, like we have a, a job and a duty to the citizens of this county to make sure that they know about it. Yeah. I mean, if the legislature is proposing something that's going to hurt your kids tremendously, whether it's Amendment 1, you have every right as a board member to advocate for the kids in your district on social media. But it's not hurting your district. But you, right. you're trying to inform the public of how this can be detrimental to their, your, their pocketbooks and their kids. 
So that's part of your duty too. So that's why you know you have to be real careful. When I was on the board, nobody knew who I ever voted for for you know president or anything. I just stayed out of all of that. But when it came to advocating for our kids or cheering them on, I would share stories from the, the district Facebook page or Instagram um, as you know as the rah rah for the representing our school system to inform your friends and community members. That's okay. Right. But if, oh gosh, my board voted to do this and I don't agree with it, and here's why you shouldn't agree with it either. Yeah, I agree. No, I would never do that. You know, once the will of the board has been met, then you have to go along with it even if you disagree with it. Again, it's in your code of conduct. That's, the, that's the first bullet on uh, that social media was uh, to, to promote positive and important news about the school district. You're right. Mm -hmm. That's a very good one. Yeah, how do y'all feel about these on the Bryan County? On their um, social I media? I plagiarize myself, but. <laughs> <laughs> they won't mind. I'll be faced. I mean. Yeah. Seven hours into it must be pretty good. Yeah, I, I think yeah. those are good. And I think we also need to be mindful that we're the governing body. We make policies that affect the employees of our district, too. Yes. So if we're putting mm -hmm. limits on what they can put on social media, we need to make sure we're following the same example because exactly. it's not it's not really cool for us to be making policy and limiting other people when we're out there blasting stuff. Right. So because what Kim point. does yeah. reflects what John does and what John does reflects what Jason does. I mean, you know, you're all in this together. So you just want to act very respectfully as much as possible. And I liked what you said about don't engage with the board members to correct them is that you that came up with that no, I, I um, and maybe we we add that in there somehow to take them offline you know sometimes when when I would see and when I was on the board blogs were big and you know you, you people can just say anything and everybody believes that it's true and it's not you know but you can't, we couldn't comment on blogs so I would call a friend and say hey can you say this for me, <laughs> you know, um, just so that they know they need to call the district. And sometimes the district PR person would comment. It's better that that happen than one of you probably, just because of who you are. And, and also while we're on this, let's address, because I've, I've seen this happen too, you'll have a, um, a person in the community that will want a private message someone and then they will they will set up a private chat with all seven yeah and i usually withdraw from that conversation i don't even so i don't want to get into open meetings where you're having a discussion in a forum but you've got to be very careful because someone in the public will do that they'll say what do y'all think about this tag all seven yes i wouldn't answer that question i would stay totally away from that mm -hmm. and that's just like an email right? right and that's subject to open records as well it doesn't matter what platform it's on and right. what's just about as bad as when they send the same message to each one individually looking for right. different answers. <laughs> right. Don't for you comparison. love that? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's better to answer them individually than it is in a group chat with all seven board members, though. So that's my point. Right. That's a good call. Yeah. yeah. I, think, um, I think we can adopt him as a whole. I, li I like it. I think the language is good. It kind of speaks to what we're trying to do. So I think we can. Copy and paste. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you, Bryan County. Yay. <laughs> Go Bryan County. Um, did you want to add anything about the, the messenger? Yeah, I would say don't engage in any open forum through Facebook Messenger or any other, so, and I'm not familiar with any other sites, but if there are any messenger type uh, things out there that you don't engage when there's a majority of the board tagged. Well, our group text. Or our group yeah. Group text. Yeah, I could go for group text too. Email. Um, I don't know how email would work on that when you get an email from a parent to all seven, but that's typically one of those things where you'd let the superintendent be the right. spokesperson for the, exactly. the district. Right. Because remember, anything you say could be a lawsuit later you and, know, and we'll used work against on some you. language for that. Okay. So, yeah, I like that. That's a, that's a great addition. Anything else with social media that you see that's not in here? Oh, we tabled that. Yeah. 
No, we just well, decided. So we just got it done. Well, I thought everybody. I didn't hear anybody say they were not yeah, okay we with. Yeah. With M. Did, did yeah, we M. Say, didn't we say M was okay? Is anybody yeah. have a problem? Everybody we seemed to be okay numbers. with M. Yeah, yeah we we After said what Nick we said. don't have to table anything. We're going to go with M. No, and I think Nick was just saying in the future, let's have a deeper discussion at another board meeting about policies and procedures that go along with the same thing, Especially right? The crisis. The crisis one, right? Yeah, that's great. Okay, communications we to it. with staff. Number one, the superintendent is the only employee that reports directly to the Board of Education. Two, board members may always contact the superintendent. Three, board members should not attend staff meetings and or staff trainings unless invited. Four, when board members are approached with community, constituent, parent concerns, they should refer the issue to the superintendent who may delegate to appropriate staff. And five, community members, constituents, and parents with concerns should be encouraged to follow the appropriate chain of command. Number four, I think if we could change the second line, second sentence from should to may, that'd be preferable. Mm -hmm. So it just, it'd just say they may refer the issue to the superintendent. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Cause a lot of times I get parent concerns and I just tell them, well, that rather than send them to him because it's not to that level, their principal, their teacher. Well, the, that's when you educate them on what they should do next. Right. Have so you talked to the have, teacher? Have you talked to the principal? And right. you know, you re recount what the chain of command is. And once it gets all the way up to the superintendent and you're still not happy, that's when you call me. Right. Yeah, that's what I usually tell them. And of course, mm -hmm. if it's something that I feel like he needs to know anyway that, that may get to that right. point, then of course I'll let him know. But if it's something that you think yeah. is going to get settled before then, I, I don't Sometimes think. it's an isolated incident, but if you're hearing from the same, a, a volume of parents over the same issue, then yeah, I would certainly give him a heads up as soon as possible. And one thing, um, we did it, was it two years ago, three years ago, on the back of all our business cards is the um, yes. chain, of, chain command. of command. Chain of command. And we, um, we talked about, I don't think it's been done yet, if we could have that added to the website, um, because I know for a lot of people, they, they go there on their phones, see the idea. board, and besides our pictures, I think if that statement was right there on the front, that would be helpful as well. Yeah, that's no problem. So. Yeah, do you have a parent, like for parents, and then you click on something, and then that information can be readily available. Yeah, do you still have it on the back of your business cards? Um, I have business cards, and they're on the back of mine. I think everybody who has business cards is on the back. Is that correct still? No. One of your new board members elected not to. Well, Do what, John? I think, but, that, but they need to One of the it. new board members elected not to have it put on the back. Right. We've had some elect not to, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend well, it. Well, John, the new, the new, pro, the new protocol is going to be you're going to have it on the back. No, in hindsight, I wish I had to put it on there because I refer to it so many times. When people, here's my card, but remember to follow the chain of command. Yeah. I could always just show it to them. So. Well, we can get new. They, they want you to solve all their problems, and you don't want to train them to keep coming back to you to solve all right. the problems, right? So. Yeah, I'm getting ready to apply for the procurement officer's job. <laughs> and, and, and while I'm thinking about it, can we have that added to? I'd like to have it on my signature line on my email as well. Oh, um, that's a good idea. So, not you know, not everybody may want to do that, but yeah. Mm -hmm. If they email my government an email, I, I like that. <laughs> well, I, I think that also empowers the, the parents as well as the students, because I've had parents bring students up to me at social events and say, tell her about this or tell her about mm -hmm. it. Well, no, no, they don't mean tell her. They mean you're, right. the child is coming. It's a middle school or high school coming to them with a concern. And they're like, they're trying to empower their child that if you have an issue, yeah. talk to the people about it. Um, right. You know, and if, if their school's aware of it, then they do that. And I said, well, that would be so-and-so, you know. But right. I think it, the chain of command empowers them to know that they can call somebody and get something mm -hmm. done about exactly. it rather than skip the steps. And I, and I think as right. school is starting, I mean, I think it's, it's probably a good opportunity, too, just to refresh with the public what are all those key entry points for communication, email, or whatever that I know we sometimes tell the public, hey, send a note here or call here. But just as a reminder, I think it's school starting, but also too that, you know, we have an app. I don't know how many people use the app, but, you know, just put that out there. Hey, as school starting, you know, download the app to do X, Y, Z, or even obviously with the, you know, following, following your child's bus um, mm -hmm. also. 
the bus out. So you just could put it somewhere on your app this. too. What's that? You could put that yeah. verbiage on your your app too. If, if yeah. with concerns, yeah. Go to the teacher. Then go. You know. Yeah. Then board members, the very last one. Yeah. Good. That's great that you have an app. Anything else on uh, communications with staff? Y'all pretty clear on that one? Okay, school visits. Number one, generally all school visits by board members should be conducted for a specific purpose. Two, board members may visit schools when invited by school or district staff. Three, board members may visit schools by making arrangements with district or school administrators in advance. Four, board members should follow visitor procedures. Five, board members should avoid participating in student meetings without invitation from school staff. Six, board members may attend PTSA, foundation, or other organization meetings when invited by a staff member. And finally, number seven, board members may attend extracurricular and co-curricular activities at their own discretion. Oh, and there's another one on the back, sorry. And finally, this policy does not preclude a board member from attending school functions as a parent should his or her child attend that school. I think, uh, I think we should strike number two because um, I think that limits us to being invited. And I think if we think we need to go visit a school, we should obviously number three, we should be they should coordinate that with the superintendent and the staff of the school. But I don't know that the that the only way to do that is by us being invited. Um, does that, I mean, I don't want to step on any kind of thing, but if we, if we say, hey, Dr. Otot, I've, I've been hearing about something at this school, can you set us up a visit? That's not him inviting me. That's me saying, hey, I'd like to go see the school. And that's what I think, number one, generally all school visits by board members should be conducted for a specific purpose. Right. And then it goes to number three, board members may visit schools by making arrangements with the school district right. staff or the, you know. And I, think, I think number two does have a place because I do too. We, we do get invitations from schools. I think we just have to, one of the things just be mindful of is, for example, if a principal or staff invites us to a school for an event or to participate in something, he, Dr. Rotod or somebody else gets an FYI, say, hey, I'm right. just I, out of that would be a I invited yeah, Jason I'm, to come see this uh, performance I, of our I, second graders. I was interpreting that statement differently than what he, no, yeah. you're, you're right from that. I was thinking, okay. I was thinking, I, I read it as we're not going to be allowed to go unless they invite us to, I was okay. thinking more of like an official visit uh, okay. type thing, not right. like, hey, we're having this come on out type thing, you know. Right. Yeah, it so I just say, interpreted it differently. Yeah, than it doesn't say sure. only when invited, but I know usually right. a staff member or somebody invites me, I used to say, well, you know, does your principal know I'm coming? Because I don't want to just show up and <laughs> yeah. um, then right. wonder why I'm there. So right. uh, usually just try to make sure that. And if the principal if invites you, he should know. That's, that because he might. So we need to school. let them know, because I know I'm, I know how people say. Well, the principal seen, should let her or his boss know. What about know. like the assistant principals and stuff? Because I mean, right. they'll say, come, I haven't seen you in a while. I'm like, well, you know, if you invite me, I'll come, but I'm not going to just show up for stuff. Uh, right. But I'm sure he has a procedure in place. If, if that happens, they let the central office now. Yeah, and, and that I'll be honest with you, that's something we probably need to clarify too. Yeah. Because I, I want the teacher to feel comfortable, I want the school to feel comfortable knowing people are visiting yeah. and also, you know, maybe something that I want to go to too. Yeah, exactly. Like, hey, what, why are you going? Well, that sounds school. interesting. I want to go too. Yeah. yeah. One, Absolutely. I'm sorry. One thing that that isn't in there mm -hmm. with school visits, number Six talks about attending PTSA foundation or other organization meetings when invited by a staff member. And I don't know if we do want to include it here, but if, you, if, if a board member is attending those organizational functions, um, technically you cannot participate. You know, if they're having a call meeting, for instance, you know, um, all of those organizations are technically under the, if they're attached to the school, then they're under the supervision of the school district, which technically puts them under the authority and supervision of the Board of Education. So um, I think we may have it in policy, but I'm not sure that, you know what, for instance, I can't go be a board member, a booster club board member at any school so 
by definition, I can't go to a board, a, a booster meeting or one of these organization meetings and actively participate either. Does that make sense? So I don't know if we need to spell that out, but that's one of those areas that I think, okay, you know what, um, if, if, if the booster club or this PTA are, is under, you know, the direction of the school district, I can't be a, I can be a member, but I can't be a voting member and I can't give direction because you know what, um, the, ultimately the board oversees this organization, so I'm helping direct this organization. I don't know if that makes sense, but. Yeah, you can't be on the PTSA board of directors at your school or, you know. Right. Because it, it duplicates, well, it's a conflict. I think you're trying to define the activity. Because like, for example, I know some of us, I'll use Kim as an example, you got a family connections. Yeah. And you yeah, well, and you I do serve on the board of family connections, but it's not. It's an well, independent 501c3. Right. Yeah, vote. And then, and and then as right. far as Education Foundation, I'm on there, but I'm a non voting member. Right. And then on the advisory committees at the school level, those are advisory committees, so we don't vote. But yeah, I mean, I'm on a lot of committees. That's a way Most of them, I don't have voting privileges. It would be okay as long as we don't have voting privileges. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Usually, like our local foundation, Education Foundation, the board chair always served on the board. Right. Um, yeah. But I don't think they were able to vote. Yeah, ours but has been established as a non-voting, I'm a non-voting member. Right, and the superintendent was on it as well. Yeah. yeah. Those are, I mean. Because you're in advisory capacity mm -hmm. when they have funds and, you know, how do we want to spend these funds and you know what the strategic plan is and you can better articulate that than anybody on that board. Yeah. So. No, I, I think those are, are yeah. good examples because those type of organizations are truly outside of the system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you start, but there are so many other organizations affiliated with schools and like the band boosters stuff, the local school council local school yeah. councils all so, that okay. so my, my so i i think that's either something to think through or maybe add here because that is a clarification for a board member that look you know what and even for the public don't ask me to do this for the you know or or i can't participate so it's not me saying no no i don't want to support you know this um, in, or, or serve in this capacity is I can't. Does that make sense? Right. So, I understand what you're saying. So yeah. maybe we should not serve on any other governing boards within school district yeah. parameters. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. That's yeah. I wrote that down. Yep. That's good. So we'll need to clarify if since we're the fiduciary thing for the well, we'll talk about the other stuff later. But as a parent, you should be able to go to the PTSA meeting. You should be able to, you know, be a part of the band boosters if your kid's in the band. You know, those right. are the types of things that, that precludes this. I mean, you need to be a parent if you need right. to be a parent. But you don't want to be PTA, PTSA president so or any officer on that God board. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like this doesn't take up enough of your time, right? Yeah, right. So just to clarify that. Are you going to take when invited by a staff member off of this and then expand it to you can't be a, a, on the governing board of a meeting or in other words you can go to the PTA meetings but you can't be on the PTA board that type so of, do we want to add that to I mean, would that be, spell it out yeah I mean, we can that's, that's I, think I think that's a good idea some language that yeah to cover more than just PTA but I had a, a comment on number one, and this kind of gets back to Nick's uh, generalities. Um, the board member should be conducting, uh, going for a specific purpose. I mean, that's kind of a given. I mean, you're not, you don't accidentally show up at a school. <laughs> I mean, you're going for a reason. I mean, even if it's just to walk around or have lunch with somebody. It's, right. Well, some, it, it just seems this, like this is really in here and it's not reflective of anybody in this room, but some board members like to play gotcha and they just show up to yeah, say, oh, well, the janitor's not doing a good job. Look at all this trash here. Or they just observe and they want to know about Joey's little sibling compared to this one. I mean, you'd be surprised some of the, the MO from some people that are not of pure intent. Yeah, I, I can see. And that's why you want to make sure that this is specific. And one of the things I would suggest is adding in um, 
a time frame, like board, number three, board members may visit schools by making arrangements with the district or school administrators in advance, 24 hours advance or 48 oh, yeah. hours. Because what happens is, do you want a principal that drops everything he or she is doing if it's dealing with a kid that's having a crisis just to escort you around <laughs> and to make sure you get what you need? No, you don't. Mm -hmm. So most people that are really good at their job want to be able to time manage right. well to make sure that you have what you need when you come there. Um, and one of the things, you know, in, in following the, the sign-in procedures, mm -hmm. one of the things that we added, I think it was Bryan County, was to be mindful of the time that you are taking from staff when you're there. So if you're visiting a teacher and you pull her aside and she's not dealing with kids in the middle of the school day, is that a really good thing? No, talk to her afterwards, right? So just be mindful um, and be respectful and professional because we have had board members that aren't that way. And I'm, I know that nobody in this room this covers y'all, but you never know who's going to be on this board. So I would add a little bit of language there. I thought that was missing, yeah. but that's just me. And y'all, this is for y'all, so. And I can validate what you said as a building level administrator, because um, so much happens in the school day. Knowing, like anything else in advance, is, is important, because mm -hmm. you can structure your day differently. Mm -hmm. um, because you always want to be respectful and um, acknowledge, you know, our right. board members coming out to visit, but some time would be, I know I would have always appreciate that. Right. I always respected our first principal when my kids were in elementary school. She never, ever dropped anything she was doing when there was a, a whiny parent there or a board member or a, a central office staff. If she was dealing with a child, you waited as long as it took. And that's what you want. That's the kind of person you want running those schools, not just here to please you. So, you know, I would just put a little bit of tweaking on that personally. Yeah. Think of being considerate, like like you basically said. But I know I've been in before meetings, invited to a sponsorship club before right. meeting, and the principal sitting in. Right. Then we're walking. He's walking me back up. I'm like, Do you have five minutes? If you don't, that's fine. And that's so right. if they have five minutes, then you can talk. But you know, just be mindful and at least ask and don't. And make sure it's only time. five minutes. Right. Wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't that yeah. be covered under <laughs> under number three? Not. By, <laughs> wouldn't that be covered under number three, where it says by making arrangements? Well, if you're invited by a staff member and you go to this meeting and then you, yeah, this, something comes up later. This is where you're calling the principal, though. And tell oh, no, I'm not calling. They're walking you back. It's okay. Never mind. It's just time. Just being, don't Courteous assume the they have extra time for right. you. Right. Um, if you're there on another reason, for another reason. Maybe yeah. on number four, you say something like, board members should follow visitor procedures, which means you need to sign in um, and be respectful be professional and respectful of school staff time. You yeah. know. And maybe we just use the word scheduled, John, for number one. Yeah. Instead of putting, making it more restrictive than you would any public person, I guess. Yeah. So instead yeah. of saying 24 or anything like that, say just a visit should be scheduled. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. And I try to tell Dr. Otok if I'm going to a school, yeah. try. A lot of times I send the emails back to myself, though. <laughs> and you need to let him say, hey, John, tomorrow's really not a good day because testing is going on or something. And oh, yeah, you need to, how about uh, right. a week well, I'm talking tomorrow. about after I've coordinated with the principal, if it's okay with them, I just give him a courtesy. Right. Even so he needs to be able to push back if, if it's yeah. not a convenient time, yeah. Yeah, once you talk to that principal. Because sometimes the principal won't tell you no. They're not going to tell you no. So he might need to say, uh, to they didn't tell you this. <laughs> you so. need to come to the 5th District, they'll tell you no in a heartbeat. <laughs> right. And a lot of Johns were for specific events, school-based yeah. events, celebrations, yeah. those that, sorts of things. Yeah, that's different, you know. Yeah. If you want to go to the graduations from right. fifth grade, you know, the moving on ceremonies from eighth grade, whatever, you know, yeah. you should be able to be there. Especially, I'm sure you know so many kids in the district that aren't your own and you want to be there to support them. Anything else with school visits? Do you not want to put in 24 hours or 48 hours or just make sure it's scheduled? Scheduled. In, in many cases, that's more than 24 hours, but okay. 24 hours 
and I know we don't want to get too much in the weeds, but it would be really appreciated by school staff to know that I've got a day to prepare for a visit. And 24 hours isn't very much time. Specific, yeah. That gets back to number one, the specific purpose. I mean, if you don't have a purpose 24 hours in advance. Okay. Anything else with that? Right. Before we go to the next one, can we take a five minute? I think we should. Okay. All right. That's a good idea. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. We ready? Proceed. All right. We're making progress. Our goal is to get through this document. And then we can, I know that time's running late, and I think Jason has to leave soon, right? Yeah, right now. You good? Yeah. Um, and then we can talk about what we didn't cover on the sheet that's top priority, and then maybe come up with some drafts for y'all to look at, and then come back together and, and decide as That'd be great. a board. I'm happy to, I always take these back with me and based on y'all's notes, and um, I can schmooze it for and, you and i know you and i were just talking i just think it's great that we're discussing this is such a better venue oh yeah than just trying to pass a copy of something back and forth so if we could get through the pieces that we've got some mm -hmm. general agreement on and then maybe explore in another meeting yeah some of the others i think that'd be fantastic absolutely just yeah. more training credits for you you know right. Uh, all right so we're talking about board meetings number c on the back of this document number one board members should be on time and fully present Parentheses, refrain from using personal electronics during meetings. Two, board members should conduct themselves professionally during board meetings. Three, board members should dress appropriately for board meetings. Four, board members should attend the meeting fully prepared by studying the posted agenda and any attachments. Five, board members represent the entire district and should be open to the opinions of the public and fellow board members. Number six, Board members should limit questions during the meetings to the superintendent or presenter and not directly question the staff in the audience unless clarification is needed. Seven, board members should keep confidentiality of privileged information a priority. Discussion and information connected with executive sessions should not be shared privately or publicly. Eight, board members should be recognized by the board chair before speaking. And finally, number nine, board members should respect the right of the other members to have a dissenting vote. On important matters, board members may explain the reasons for their vote, either during deliberation or before casting their vote. That's a lot. Yeah. I'm and yet there's still a lot of things that probably aren't covered here yeah. that I'm we might want to talk about. I'm Mr. Chester. We can strike number three. Um, dressing appropriately is so subjective. I mean, what, what I think we can do is just adopt that our, our dress should be business casual. I yes, think that I, would, I was going to suggest that you just say the board members should dress in biz, uh, business casual or whatever y'all decided. Yeah, that's more of a straightforward statement. It's, a, it's defined. I think everybody can, they know what business casual is. But, you know, um, but I think we can, we can, uh, Adopt business casual, but then put in something as, you know, unless coordinated by the board chair for a themed event, something like that, right? Our like a retreat. You can whatnot. wear jeans. You yeah. can be more comfortable, you know, if you take retreats. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, I think he means like we've had Jersey Day or yeah. Yeah. college, yeah. college, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Are y'all OK with business casual? Yeah. yeah, I think that's a great addition. And then number seven. I put strike, th just strike it all together, but the confidentiality is covered by the OCGA. So instead of saying that you keep confidentiality, well, you know what, we all signed the executive session statement and, and the, there's actually law that applies to that. So I don't know if we just want to say, like we did with open meetings, we'll follow the, the code on confidentiality, yes, which sir. may be better than saying we will follow the law is for number seven so um my recommendation would be okay yeah the law says you keep confidentiality we all sign off on it we will follow the law and it's a nice little reminder there for yeah. the community to see that yeah right sure that because you w yeah. you wouldn't believe how many people break that you know and, and that that leaves them open for trouble and then number eight um, board members should be recognized by the board chair before speaking. Well, that just goes to parliamentary procedure. We already have a board policy that says we use um, Robert's rules, I think. 
or policy. Yeah. I think they're based off that. But we have a modified. It's a modified. It's a modified. Yeah, ours are modified, but I don't know that they. Uh, we would have to look at them again to see if they actually address the the fact about being um, acknowledged to speak. Yeah, that's a little different. So I, I guess that's just clarification then, because if 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 you got to be recognized by the chair, then that's kind of embedded in parliamentary procedure anyway. If the board chair is the chair of the meeting, then you know, it's redundant. I guess that's what I'm thinking. It does. Your rules do say that you have to be recognized by the chair. The chair has to give you the floor. So, um, we just then, reference the policy. Follow I would just reference rules the rules establishment policy B. Policy B, whatever. Yeah. And and then last but not least, number nine. Um, the second sentence is is you know i think we should try to eliminate the ambiguity it says on important matters mm -hmm. well what's an important matter <laughs> you know if you've got the landscaping contract it's important to you you know i mean so um i think just striking through that first part of the sentence would be better drafting so on important matters is struck through so it just says board members may explain the reasons for their vote either during deliberation or before casting their vote. I think that's just a better statement. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Those are good. What else? On number nine, if they do, if, if someone in the public asks after the meeting, why did you vote that way? You should be able to explain it to them without you know, walking that line of whether you're gonna go against, because you're supposed to support your board's decision once you leave, but you can still explain why you voted the way you did, I'm assuming, right? And right, and that's that's a good reason why you, during the meeting you should say why you're not supporting it, right. so they'll hear it. And stick to that same. And stick to the same right. thing you said. Do you want to add that? Sure. What do y'all think? Say it again, Jeff. I'm not, I'm no, it, just, just clarifying, because once the board makes a decision, you've got to support that decision in public two or three days later, for example. Right. But people may ask you, why did you vote that way? So this is specifically addressing a, a vote. So if someone asks you why you voted that way, you should be able to explain it. This wouldn't limit you from explaining your vote after the vote because the, the language says, may explain the reasons for their vote either during deliberation or before casting their vote. But you may have someone in the public ask you why you voted that way later. So why don't we <clears> strike <throat> the second part as well? So we'll strike through on important matters and then we we'll strike through after the second comma as well so that it just says board members may explain the reasons for their vote period i would also yeah i mean it, is that just for dissenting vote because if you have to abstain you should state why some board members just abstain all the time they're not doing their job they're not following the code of ethics i know y'all aren't like that but some you know, if, if there is a real conflict, they need to explain why they're going to ha have to sit this one out. Ms. So, Cobb. During, Ms. Cobb. During, right. Ms. Cobb. Um, yeah, I agree. I think, I think, <coughs> I don't remember where this one came from, but as far as either during, de during deliberation or before casting their vote, I don't know, it needs to be that specific. But after we've already voted, I mean, maybe to somebody that asks you later, but we don't need to get in a long discussion after the vote's already taken. Yeah, you move in the on. Meeting. So this oh, is right. this board rep board meeting represent representation, excuse me, is during the board meeting. So I think it was just trying to say, look, if you've got something to say about it, say it. You've got the motion, you've got the second, then we've got the discussion. So if you need to say something, say it during discussion and not after if there's a five two vote, don't decide to pop up after that and you know, state your case. So. Or go back under board member comments and rehash it. Something right. happened an hour ago. Right. right. Mr. Dean. Yes, yeah, you're in the new member uh, school board association uh, training. They told you not to ascend from any of your votes. To always vote for it one way or the other, even if it's a hard decision. So. Yes, that's why you're there. Yeah. You have to make a decision. Okay. It's a hard job, right? So you yeah, have to vote one way or the other. Thing. You <laughs> would hope. But some people don't, you'd be surprised. And, and if that's happening on your board, you need to hold them accountable. And these help you do that. What else? 
under this one. So we're leaving that? So board members should respect the right of other members to have a dissenting vote. Board members may explain the reasons for their vote during the meeting discussion or the, you know, and then forget about the either during deliberation or, or before casting your vote. <coughs> Is that what you're asking? No, I'm lost. I'm sorry. It's all right. I didn't know if y'all wanted to, to make that one shorter. Number nine. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's too restrictive. No, yeah, but in the context of a meeting, we have presentations, we have, I, I, I guess, yeah, I mean, there's other points during the meeting, mm -hmm. there's other points during the meeting where it's, it would be on point to speak to an issue even if you've already voted on it because it's come up again or there's additional information. So, and then, you know, a member could just ask the chair for a point of privilege. Hey, you know what, can I speak to this as a point of privilege? You know, so you, I understand what you're saying, but I, I think in the terms of how we do business, that's really narrowing and defining. Well, I, don't, I guess I thought these were just guidelines and norms to try to give people new coming on the board, you know, what, how we've been doing it, if we need to look at it every once in a while. But I don't know that's going to be restrictive where Jeff's going to go, sorry, we've already talked about that. You can't talk about that. I think within, within yeah, reason. Jeff may not, but some other chairman may. Well, within reason, I, I just, I mean, I've we're not going to some write, of them before do that. So I don't think we're going to sanction somebody over it, though. So um, I agree with being general, but at the same time, it's like we do need to encourage each other. Hey, if, if you want to say something about it, let's say it before we vote, because after you guys may not have known something. Well, if I wait till after y'all vote and then I say something, that's not really fair to you guys. So if we do want to share something, it would be nice to share it with everybody prior to us voting versus after us voting and then bring it to your attention afterwards. That really doesn't, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but I just want to kind of give guidelines for maybe new people who may not get that in new board member training or something. So or maybe we just say prior to the vote, before because sometimes vote. these things will come up in a work session that you're just discussing it, right? You're not taking any action, but I have a problem with this issue because of blah, blah, blah. I can't really support it because of this. So that there's no surprises when it does come up next month for a vote, whether it's a policy that you have to hold for 30 days or whatever. Yeah, it, maybe it, it, maybe it, we can say at the appropriate time or something like that, because I understand you're trying to put parameters yeah. on it. So I don't want it too restrictive, but then again, we, yeah, we don't want it too wide either. So maybe just saying, just explain the vote at the appropriate time during the meeting and then rely upon the chair to help set parameters. Okay, this is the appropriate time to explain your vote. Does that make sense? Well, with the with the rule of order, though, once you call a question and you take a vote, it's supposed to be done anyway, uh, right? Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. it, technically, you, you're not supposed to bring it up again. Right. Um, now, under board member comments, that's kind of a way you can probably say something else about it, but it wouldn't be brought back up for a reconsideration for another vote at that point. Right. But it's best that your fellow board members know why you, you voted move. before oh, right. you vote. Right. You know. Right. Once you move to reconsider. Right. Right. At that moment. Which has to be a yes vote. Right. <laughs> So something general could be prior to voting. Forecasting the vote. Before casting the vote. I'm kind of leaning back to just going back to the original number nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but is that not before the vote? Is that not part of the discussion process? It is. Yes. I mean, it's, he asked us if there's any discussion, so. Yeah, because once you get a second, that's when you get your discussion right. in. So I think we're all kind of on the same page. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what we had narrowed down number nine was board members should respect the right of other board members to have a dissenting vote and then strike out on important matters and then you would start over. Board members may explain the reasons for their vote. Period. Before casting their vote? And then yeah. Prior to casting their vote? Yeah. 
and that could be at a meeting before it could be during discussion anywhere along the line say may doesn't mean you have to but it does say may so just kind of encouraging if you're going to do it that's probably when to do it right any other issues with this some of the things that i know are important according to this sheet and just my experience is when it comes to meetings sometimes and a lot of boards are guilty of this you have to remind people to be mindful of airtime because sometimes you have air hogs that do all the talking and other people don't get a chance to talk as much. So we put that in ours <laughs> and it helped. But be mindful of air time. Um, be mindful that these meetings should really focus on student achievement. You know, how much time are you spending on operational issues versus spending time on improving student achievement in your district? That's just kind of a you don't have to have that as norm, but that's just something to be mindful of. Um, no surprises uh, for the staff, for the superintendent, for your fellow board members, you know, never trying to play gotcha. And I know this board is, is, is not um, mindful of that, but having been on a staff with a board that liked to play gotcha, it's not fun for the staff. Um, and when you make decisions, make sure that you put kids first, you know, you put your students first, your taxpayers are close second, right? Um, and those are some of the things, how do you, do you have a policy for how you get things on the agenda? And I know that's, there, those that you mentioned um, are important, but that's another area I think we need to clarify. Okay. You know, how do you, is it through the superintendent and board chair that items are considered for Right. upcoming board meetings how do we handle policy mm -hmm. you know just some guidelines for us on how to submit right. those requests for consideration for board agenda we would put at the end of our board meetings our, our monthly board meeting we only had one a month um, that was the board business and often we would have a work session leading up to it and at the end of the meeting we had a, an item called future business and so any board member could bring up items that they feel like might need further examination in two months, three months, and then the board could decide as a whole, do they want the superintendent staff to, you know, undertake whatever it is the issue is. And that was one way we would get things on the agenda. Oh, I think we need a policy on sex trafficking. I mean, that is something that is, has come up. We have one school district in the state that ha has developed one. You know, we need to be mindful of that. We need to know what the signs are. What are we looking for? You know, those are the things that you hear out in the community that the superintendent might not have thought about or the staff might not have thought about. So you bring that up and you have a, a quick discussion and say, well, maybe we'll bring it on as an item, not an action item, but we'll talk about it at the next meeting and further discuss it because usually future business is late in the day, <laughs> late mm -hmm. in the evening, and you want to go home. <laughs> so that's one way to do it. Um, just get with your board chair and say, hey, I really feel like we need to bring up a policy on blah, blah, blah. And then he takes it to Brian, gets his take on it. I mean, there's a whole myriad of ways to do it. But you really want to make sure that you kind of take a quick straw poll of the rest of the board that it's important to them too. Because, you know, is it tied to your strategic plan? You don't want to go down a rabbit hole that isn't going to better, you know, student achievement. So should we just go ahead and there? It was on our regular uh, board meeting at the end. It would be future business. Like, okay, we need to pick a delegate for the GSBA delegate assembly. Who's, we need to put that on the agenda for next month. Anybody interested? And then you say, oh, well, I'll do it or I'll do it. I mean, it doesn't have to be mind shattering <laughs> or shattering, mm -hmm. any, anything like that. But trends that are coming up, we see that the growth is happening. There's a lot of development coming up. How are these new apartments gonna affect our student enrollment? Is that something that we want to undertake to talk about where we are in our demographic study? I mean, it sounds like we should talk about that at every meeting, but it sounds like what? <laughs> That's a topic you said for every meeting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah in, a, in a high growth area like this. Sure. John. Yeah. Um, and Dr. O talks heard this a hundred times. 
I think we need to change the what the format of our board meetings to be a board of education meeting and not a Dr. Otak briefing. I think we need to get him off the stage of having to come up with presentations. Uh, and I hate to use this term, but to entertain us. It's, and it's not entertainment, it's information. But I think we need to be addressing more of new business that we need to and discussing the issues that we've got. Mm -hmm. And for, as a board, for example, as a whole. the budget. The budget is you know it's divided up into 12 things and it's presented each month he could email us that and do a quarterly review or whatever is required by state laws and keep him off the stage if you would or his, his staff i think this we should focus more on what we want to do as a board of education and 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 step away from dr otak having to prepare a presentation for us twice a month that's just my general thoughts so y'all meet twice a month y'all have board meetings mm -hmm. twice a month so yes. you have action items twice a month and that's something we actually Why? addressed in our last meeting <laughs> that is looking a lot. at changing the format of our meetings to a work session that would be great and then the second meeting being perhaps items that are appropriate on right. a consent agenda yes and then that focus because you've already had the, the in-depth discussion about it yeah that's what most school districts do because for a staff to have to come up with different action items every, twice a month, that's a lot of work. Yeah. That doesn't really garner you a whole lot of bang, probably. But Clark and I have been buck. working on a plan, and essentially, and I know we talked about this in our last board meeting, that the yeah. morning meeting, this meeting, that we t traditionally have would become a work session. Right. Where we would present agenda items that would then be approved at our regularly scheduled evening meeting that occurs on the first Tuesday of each month. So really one agenda per month, utilizing the yeah. same meetings that we've scheduled on our calendar, but transitioning the morning meeting to being more- A work session. Work session, mm -hmm. discussion, evening meeting, approval of those items. And that it gives the staff time in between. If the board needs to tweak something or, you know, that gives you time to come back and fix it. Yeah. and then send the board packet back out you know however many days before your yeah. regular because yeah, honestly but for us putting the agenda together it it is it is difficult for two months to to speak to what we discuss as board here but if we had one agenda that you guys have time to consider we discuss right. even before considering voting on an item i think would be a beneficial exactly. uh, directional change for us i would highly recommend that as a best, best practice yeah because that's and then you have you know the tributes to the kids and you know teacher of the year that's at your regular board meeting at night when more people can come you know right um, yeah. but you've done the heavy lifting in your work session you've asked all the hard questions you've had the in-depth discussions and the board meetings don't go as long you know typically can, and, hang on, hang on, Kim Cobb for, go ahead oh wait and no, I'm just we'll that, I do think I do think not lengthy presentations but short presentations are good because this is a board meeting for the governing body it gives him a chance or his staff a chance to yeah. get that out in the public if he, he can send it to us an email all day but if it's not where they can see it or on the website or something then that is you know i think the presentations right. sometimes are important as long as they're efficient yeah i mean you want your public to hear what you're hearing yeah instructional and it all but getting things. back to what you said john i hear where you're coming from and usually we would come up with a board work plan at the beginning of the year about this time to say okay as a board this is what we need to work on this year this is the training we need to get we need to improve relations with our county commissioners we need to you know figure out if annexation is going to happen those are the the big big items that in your role yes what can you do to help benefit the staff and the superintendent do what they do so I, I hear what you're saying, and, and I don't know if y'all have, you usually had a retreat in the summer and came up with that work plan for the next year. Because um, it's, it's always a cycle. You're always learning new things. You get new challenges every year. No, no year is the same as the year before. Um, we, we don't have retreats in the fall. We have off-site work sessions, but uh, we, don't, we, don't, we don't have retreats in our community. So OK, um, good for you. I was I, I one of the things I would say is I've heard it before on the work sessions and I would ask um, uh, superintendent and our chair if they can get some feedback from some of the other board members in the surrounding communities because I, I think every um, 
every one of the counties that surrounds us, Polk, Douglas, maybe even Cobb, they all do work sessions. So I'd like to hear how that works from actual board members, you know, from their point of view. So just some feedback on that. I think it's a great idea, but I'd like to hear, you know, if, if majority of board members are saying, yeah, we don't need to do it that often or it doesn't work, then, you know, other, other school board members could tell us that. But I think it's a good idea, but I'd like to hear some more feedback. Mm -hmm. It's worth reaching out. I'll, I'll reach out to Chairman Chastain in Cobb County and ask him, and then we'll, if you'll reach out to, yeah, we'll, we'll reach out to we'll some folks. That. You can always go in the GSBA hub and ask that question to the all board members group. Yeah. You know, and see yeah. what you get back. Can't hurt. A little group response. Yeah. yeah. I would almost bet that our working sessions would not be working sessions like we're experiencing today. They would become much more compact and faster if we had a uh, set agenda, if you would, of what we were going to discuss, what we we're going to approach for that meeting. And, and we work through them. It's, it's just that the profile or the status of the meeting would just be set up different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'd work, work out issues one meeting, we'd have open discussion like this, and then the next one, all those in favor would be voting on. So. Right. Mm -hmm. I just want to, want to go back before we get off this topic so it doesn't get lost. So. Um, some of the things you were stating earlier about, um, and I don't know if we want to write it as 10, 11, 12, or just weave it into what's already here, but um, in terms of like, you know, no gotcha games and those types of things, and just, you know, add that. I do think we should have a specific bullet point in terms of um, norms and protocols. It does, um, I think, highlight, accentuate the, um, the work we are to accomplish at board meetings should be underlined and driven um, towards um, developing, creating um, greater academic success and student achievement. I mean, I don't know how yeah. we want to write it, but I think it should yeah. be spelled out in black and white that um, when we come here and even when we put the agenda together, that um, that's kind of where we're what we're driving towards. I think as a as a as a team goal, as a as a governing body. Um, yeah, we can certainly put some language together. Yeah. Because we're, we're here about kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's a nice reminder to the public as well. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, you also don't have anything on here about public comment. We have a new policy. So you have it under policy. We did. Since, a matter of fact, since your last training, okay. we have a new policy. Oh, great. Um, in place and, and has been approved and we're working through right Should now. Should we put follow... Uh, Public input policy. Okay. Board members welcome public comment as for yeah. per the whatever. How much time do you give them? They have five minutes. Five minutes? And is it at the yeah. beginning of the meeting? Yeah. And then if it's a group, there's you elect a representative Good. to speak for the group. It's Good. Well, congrats on the new policy. That's great. Yeah. That's new since you were here last. Yeah. I, re I remember now talking with you all about that. I'm sure your public appreciates it. Yeah. And Julie, I know we're kind of running short on our time yeah. for our training. Um, my thoughts were, and, and yeah. I know we had a discussion about this at break, we can do the edits to this, Yes. what we've discussed here, but I do think there's further work that we need to address in, in areas? Yeah, I will take a look at this and based on your input, add some, I can just send you a draft of some of these other areas that you might want to consider. Yeah. And then we can get back together again after you study it a little bit and think about it and it'll go much faster, yeah. hopefully, because you've, you've covered a lot of ground. This is hard work. <laughs> yes, it is. This is a lot of good work and it's been a great discussion. Well, so I really appreciate yeah, I think, all of you I mean, giving I'll it. I'll just highlight real quick. I mean, two of the items I think I know we didn't spend a lot of time on or we didn't really get to, but I think in terms of required professional learning, I think for board and then I think as a board to ensure that we're um, supporting the, the leadership and I think, you know, kind of staff across the board in terms of what is that professional development. So what's, what's good for us should be good for mm -hmm. everybody across the county. And I think just, I think... Um, and that probably takes some time to have discussion around it. Then also, too, I think whatever with this item on here about requesting funds, um, 
Yeah, I wasn't sure what that was yeah. exactly. Do you remember? I, I think that's probably related to professional development it was. activities. Okay. So, oh, okay. Oh, that was that was tied together. Okay, yeah. I remember now. Yeah, I mean, some of the big ticket ones I think are superintendent evaluation, self evaluation, um, professional learning, like you said. Um, let's see. I know committees might be an issue with y'all. Y'all might want to have a discussion about that. Yeah. Um, how to develop your board agenda if that's an issue. Uh, how to sanction a board member. That's already a policy. Mm -hmm. But do we need to state that, that you follow that policy if the board doesn't adhere to these, <laughs> you know, or their policy? Um, you know, some people don't have a policy on policy making so I didn't know where we were with that yeah we definitely um, need to look at that and strategic planning do you have a policy on that and how often it's done you know that you would adhere to it you tie your meeting uh, agenda items to it I think you you do already yes we do don't you so that's yeah. great so you're already there but do you need to spell it out I mean that's y'all's decision um, that's the topic I would like to really emphasize on dr. Otak and I have discussed this several times about how we do our strategic plans right because so. y'all are halfway through yeah yeah so you're but, you're and three I really i'd like to and i know we're running out of time today but i think it'd be beneficial to have another work session that we can talk about some of these issues i think this has been extremely beneficial i, I can speak for myself that i've really enjoyed the opportunity to well, hear you. from everyone you know, it's that consensus building that I it think is. is really important for us to come together and say, hey, this is how we want to work. These are, this is our vision. This is where we see ourselves going as a board. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd like to do that sooner rather than later. That'd be so. great. I think so. And I, I just really appreciate your time. Thank you for letting me come back. I always love hanging out here in Paulding County. Um, my best friend lives down the, the road, so I usually have lunch with her, but she's at the beach this week, oh. so, oh well. Um, but if you don't mind filling out an evaluation, how we can improve, how I can improve, let me know. And I'll say again, you know, this is the second time you've come and worked with us, but just your ability to work with your experience as a board member, oh, thank you. Has, I think is really beneficial to all of us, but you know, you just have a really good sense of just guiding the discussion that has well, been very you. valuable I appreciate it so thank you so much for well, all of your work we're GSBA is here to help you any way we can call me anytime if you need anything and I'll tell you you can call her anytime because I, have. <laughs> I, do, I do answer all the time yeah. <laughs> I yeah. live by myself I don't even know my office phone number I have to admit that sorry yeah and yeah. I agree I would just like to thank you because I think I think I know I can only speak for myself but I got a lot out of your training last time and well, the, the presentation is just it, it's smooth it's not Mm -hmm. pointing fingers or condescending or anything mm -hmm. and we've got more discussion and more kind of hearing what what everybody's kind of thinking that wanted to speak versus going back and forth with emails and trying to do surveys that takes that forever just, that kind of separates <laughs> yeah. us rather than bring us together so I just know that all boards struggle with this I mean it's because it's it's a lot of ground to cover so there's a lot of good discussion that comes out of it and it just forms an even stronger team. And I think so. this discussion, since it'll be publicly available, like, you know, they can kind of see the transparency that I think we're continuing to kind of fight for, push for in terms of, I think, how we work together as a board and making um, decisions. So there's right. no questions, right? you know, you. at all in terms of how are we getting to a decision point on things. So. Well, thank you very much. I know y'all have to finish with your agenda, so I'll thank sit you. down. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you very sure. much. All right. Um, <clears throat> our last item on the agenda is uh, one that we added previously um, on land, and I'll let Mr. Albright read the uh, recommendation or the motion. This will be a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the sale of approximately 2,024 square feet, which is 0 0.04 acres of surplus land adjacent to W.C. Abney Elementary School uh, to Summer, Summerlin Homes, LLC, for the purchase price of $10,000 and to authorize the chairman uh, and superintendent to execute documents associated with the sale. All right, you heard a uh, motion. This, any second by Ms. Cobb, is there any discussion? All in favor, please show by raising your hand. Any opposed? Motion passes six to one. Um, 
At this time, I'll take a uh, motion to adjourn. Move. So moved by Mr. Albright, second by Mr. Dean. Any discussion? All in favor, please show by raising your hand. Motion passes unanimously. Meeting adjourned.